Uh, my name is Carol McGuigan. I'm the chair of Berlin Labour International branch. So Labour International is the constituency party that Labour Party members can join if they live outside the UK. So is anyone interested in that, um, please see one of us afterwards. Um, so as Labour Party members, we're dedicated obviously to seeing a Labour government in the UK. And as democratic socialists living in Berlin, we're interested in dialogue with other democratic socialists because we're internationalists and we believe that we can learn from and be in solidarity with each other. Um, so, and some of us have or are seeking dual citizenship in Germany, so we naturally take more than an interest in politics here. So the idea for this evening came about because um, living here we were obviously concerned about the rise of the AFD and the attendant waning or stagnant support for left progressive parties. And although there were very welcome protests in Berlin and other places against fascism and racism, um, personally I couldn't see much being done to address, well, why are people turning to the AFD? What are the social conditions making people more vulnerable to these arguments. And it seemed to me that Aufstehen was seeking to engage in these social questions and walk into very difficult but important situations. Then I was aware that the reception to Aufstehen was very hostile, especially online, and this seemed largely to do with a prominent founder member and things that she had said previously. Um, what seemed to be being lost, though, was the, the social rationale behind the setting up of the movement. So it seemed important to me to try and have a civilized, comradely discussion about this movement and whether it can offer ways back from the, the pull of right populism and towards a social empowerment of people who feel unrepresented and unheard. And, um, and if people believe it can't do that, then, then why? Why do they feel that? Um, why is that? And is there anything else happening that does address these questions? So, so Phil uh, of Die Linke International Groups and I talked about it and uh, have invited the speakers here on the platform. So um, Steve Hudson, founder member of Aufstehen, co-chair of Germany International, uh, Germany Labour International rather, SPD member, Dale um, 21 and um, Momentum member. And Christine Buchholz, uh, De Linke Abgeordnete, and Jerome Bachelet Bachelier of La France en Suisse. Um, so the format is that each speaker will address us for 10 minutes with translation, song translation. Then we will open uh, for contributions from the floor in which people can use whichever language they prefer, and there won't be translation, and then speakers will sum up at the end. So we aim to finish at 9.30, and those who wish to can continue the discussion in a nearby bar. So um, I'll pass over to Phil to introduce Jerome. Okay, so very briefly. I hope you'll introduce yourself, but my name is Phil Button. I'm the joint speaker of the Linker Berlin Internationals. Uh, we attempt to get the non-Germans in Berlin uh, involved in political activity here. This is the first meeting we've organized together with Labour Berlin, and hopefully it won't be the last we're looking towards uh, especially with um, Jeremy Corbyn as Labour leadership of the way in which we can work together in the future. Um, the first speaker is Jerome Bachelier. He is a member of our international group. He is also a member of the La France en Semise in France. He's going to explain the movement which is defining us all at the moment, the French Yellow, Yellow Vest movements, and also addressing some of the questions which have been raised about it. Um, sure. 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 Okay. Um, ten minutes to speak about this movement is going to be very tough. It is the longest social movement since 1968 in France. The most represented movement since the civil war, named as well the Algerian War. So I will present the movement with the, what I think the origins of the movement. Then I will talk about the division. And then the mode of action, the claims, and the government's answer. So um, the fiscal crisis. So the graphic showed uh, show the evolution of taxes over several decades. The conclusion is simple. What was previously paid by the capital income is now paid by households. So you can see. In 1977, uh, between the non-financial cooperation and household, it was only 9.9 .9 points. In 2017, it is 20 points. 
So the reason why the movement starts on a new tax is not a surprise. Uh, the permanent economic crisis. Uh, since the middle 1980s, France had a high unemployment rate. Access to the Eurozone did not change the situation. Entire geographical areas have untied themselves for the business. They prefer to work out the business where the wages conditions are more favorable for the capital. France is through the second country in terms of dividends paid to the shareholders in the world. 57 billion euros have been given to the shareholders last year. Uh, this area are formally occurred by the French Communist Party. This is very well explained in the book of Didier, uh, Didier Ribon. I don't know if some of you know Didier Ribon. He was very famous uh, in Germany the last two years because of his book translated in German. And uh, those areas are now the, uh, very popular for the Rassemblement National uh, after the first French party, the abstention. Add to the local localization problem, the state is not doing anything about the disappearance of the public service like public school, hospital, train, transportation. Causing a feeling that the promise of equality, uh, one of the promises of the Republic, is broken. Uh, 9 million people living in poverty in France, 20% are problem to it three times a day. And I think it's very important as well to don't forget the 2008 crisis to understand the movement. The political crisis. France is certainly one of the only countries where conducted elected officials can continue their political career without any problems. Good example, last week, uh, Alain Juppé, former prime minister, was appointed in the uh, uh, we call this, uh, constitutional court. He has been uh, sentenced to five years of, he couldn't be in a political system for five years because of some fake uh, jobs in the right party in the 90s. Uh, while still there are countless ministers and presidents who are the target of investigation, there is also the problem of senior officials who leave the civil service to work in the private sector and then return to work for the state, what we call the revolving doors. As a result, French citizens abandoned the polls and almost insurrection political situation in terms of participation and results since the National Front, Rassemblement National, now continues to beat record after record. In 2002, Jean-Marie Le Pen had 5.0 million voters. In 2017, 10.6 for his daughter, Marine Le Pen. So you can see the abstention really went up, especially in the last European election. Uh, but the war was at the end of February, the 2005 referendum uh, on the European Constitutional Treaty, it happened as well in Ireland, in Portugal, rejected by 50%. It will be validated through a similar contact by the legislative vote, thanks to Sarkozy. Uh, it's very important to understand the, the movements in France, the yellow movement. Uh, it's, it's a very strong crisis of representation. They, they don't want to be represented anymore. It's, uh, it's very hard to understand for us. We are involved in political party, but they really have big problems with that. They, they don't want to have someone who is going to negotiate for them, except if they have the un entire control of this person. Uh, in the last election, the main traditional party did not manage to go in the second round. The Social Democrat made a score of 6%, and the Republican made a 20%, even if François Fillon was as well accused of corruption during this campaign. Uh, even with this call, you can see that many MP, there are many MP in the national Assembly. On the, on the top, you can see how the Assembly National looked today. Uh, the election is a two-round voting system, it's taking only uh, on the first round the two, uh, the two candidates on the top, except if we have a very high uh, participation, you can have three candidates. I think in the last election it did not happen in one circumscription, but I'm not even sure of that. The second assembly is the second assembly if you have a full proportional. So it's a big difference. So people 
don't have the feeling they are represented in the, in the parliament, and actually you, you see the reason here. Um, the media crisis, I think it's in most of the modern uh, democracy we have this problem. Uh, many journalists since the beginning of the Gilets Jaunes movement were victims of violence. The, the Gilets Jaunes are complaining about the fact that Macron was supported by the main media and journalists. On the top, main media are talking non-stop about violence, anti-Semitism, as well, new since last weekend. Big surprise, I think, for the Labour number. Uh, coming from Gilets Jaunes, when most of the new are peaceful. 90% of the media are owned by nine billionaires, like you can see. If some people, some of you know the media in France, you can see who is the owner of the media. Uh, on the top of that, the journalists who are working for this media, most of them are going to uh, public media and are uh, going back to the private media. So you hear all the time the same uh, propaganda. Um, all these ingredients were there before Macron election. And I will finish with the light, uh, last point of uh, the origin of the Légion, Macron himself. Uh, for most French and European citizens, Macron is an unknown when he becomes Minister of Economy in 2014. And yet his position is only one step in the strategy designed by the French oligarchs. Like a Berodowski who launched Putin, Macron has been supported by oligarchs for years. Macron is from a provincial town, Amiens. He will move to Paris after meeting his wife who left his family and children to support his new 24-year-old husband. Brigitte Macron is coming from a bourgeois regime who will introduce Emmanuel Macron to a sequel that will allow, her to, to allow him to access the country's highest responsibilities. Macron go, uh, goes through the ENA, the most prestigious school in the country, where Chirac, Guilpin, Hollande and many other political responsible and so many senior civil servants and company CEO, CEOs have gone. It is a small world that is destined to govern France. Macron became a financial inspector. After four years, he led the senior's office for Rothschild. In France, when a citizen goes through the Grand Ecole, he has to work for 10 years. If he leaves his position, he must reimburse the salary he has to receive until the end of his 10 years. This sum represents 50,000 euros when he left. In 18 months, Macron will, beco will become a millionaire. Between 2011 and 2012, he declared more than 2.4 million assets. He's a member of the Atali Commission for Growth and has been offered a ministerial arbitrary position during Sarkozy terms. A member of the Social Party from 2006 to 2000 and 2009. He wrote the economic program of François Hollande and became his secretary general of l'Elysée. In private, he doesn't not hide his ambition to become president of the Republic. He met Bernard Arnault, French first fortune, and Xavier Niel, a French billionaire close to, to the close to the people of France. On more, Emmanuel Macron would like to become president of the Republic. He became minister of economy and was already noticed for his arrogance and his contempt for class when he spoke with the workers. He left the government in 2016 to form the party En Marche. For his first election as a candidate, he became president. So this is Macron with uh, his wife and Rothschild. So, after 18 months of the most liberal agenda, the lowest class did not accept, accept a new tax, a fuel tax. During these 18 months, Macron did not listen to the trade unions, did not listen to the opposition, did not listen to even different people in his own party. Macron cut the tax on the richest people of the country when he was adding some new tax on the poorest. In the first year, he gave 24 billion euros to the 10% richest in France. The reaction came from people living in a small city in the countryside where they need the car to go to work, pick up the children, go to the supermarket to fill up the fridge. At the first place, it was just a petition about the fuel tax, but in a couple of weeks, different videos on social network were watched by millions of people. Mode of action. Before according to the space and participants, 
and the program stores are blocked. So Ronaba would become Agora, where many people will celebrate Christmas and the New Year. In the major city, demonstrations take place every Saturday, last Saturday and next Saturday, till going on. During those demonstrations, different symbols of the French flag and the Marseillaise are used to place the movement in the long revolutionary, long revolutionary uh, movement. Other symbols of the commune, Mayan, are used frequently. Blockage of different business like Carrefour, Supermarket, Amazon, Plateau. After a couple of weeks and the success of the mobilization, Priscilla Ludovsky and different leaders launched a survey to give some political demands. In a couple of weeks, some people who have never been interested in politic, politics start to ask some political demands. <coughs> most of the people, not most of the people, but big amount of people get politicized in very, very short time in this movement. The claim, uh, citizen initiative referendum. Uh, in addition to adoption, I would put it, will be triggered by 700,000 people signed an online petition supervised by a recognized independent body. In addition to addressing all scrapping legalization, legalization, the popular vote could also be held in international agreements or, or to host MPs or other elected officials. Zero homeless, income tax, more progressive, uh, more slices, uh, no pension below 1,200 euros, and many other. Uh, most of them are about uh, direct democracy and social justice, and I'm not talking about immigration or Islam. The government response. For several weeks, the government locked itself in and refused to see the reality. It was not until the violence in early December that the government understood. Its first response will be repressive. As for many years now, France has been criminalizing demonstrators. The use of no lethal weapons barred in many countries has caused hundreds of serious injuries in the beginning of the movement. 1,900 wounded. 1,700 arrested, 1,000 convictions, 180 injured at the end, 17 people who lost one of the eyes, five hands lost, one dead, and we can even add 12 more people on the top of this one. People were actually blocking the doors uh, and actually you know, died by accident because they were fighting for the interest of all of us. In a couple of weeks, people are sent to jail. When, when you probably know um, Monsieur Benalla and some other people like Sarkozy are still free. In some cases, they are not judged for their crime, but sometimes just because of a suspicion. Other numbers, 70 people find the movement justified. Some other surveys show 60% of support. It's always between 60% and 80% support from the population. 30% uh, understand the violence coming from the generation. It's a huge number. The second answer was political, far from the claims of the yellow race, of course. Fuel tax has been abandoned, and thanks to act, Thanks to hacking, some categories of workers and pensioners will have an increase of two dozen euros. If some yellow press stop the movement at that time, it continues and continues at high level. The major debate organized, the grand debat, organized by the government will be used by Emmanuel Macron to campaign for the European as a taxpayer expense. In contrast to the media, they will try to make the yellow vest look like an extra right movement, while various studies and polls show desire for more social justice and democracy. Uh, I will finish with uh, a bishop from Brazil who say there are three kinds of violence. The first, the mother of all over, all, all over, is institutional violence. The violence that legalizes and perpetuates domination, oppression, and exploitation. The violence that flourishes and destroys millions of people in silence and well oiled machinery. The second is revolutionary violence, which is born of the desire to abolish the first. The third is repressive violence, the purpose of which is to stifle the second by becoming an auxiliary and accomplice to the first violence, the one that generates all the other. 
There is no greater hypocrisy than to call violence the second, pretending, the for pretending to forget the first, which gives birth to it, and the third, which kills it. Thank you for your attention. So uh, thank you ever so much for that, uh, Jérôme. It was really um, enlightening and uh, yeah, quite um, yeah, startling as well, some of those statistics about the injuries. Um, so um, our next speaker is um, Steve Hudson. So as I said, uh, Steve is also um, a member of the Labour Party. He lives in Cologne um, and um, he's also a member of Momentum. Um, he also um, joined, I think, was it last year, the SPD, and uh, is a member of DL uh, 21, um, and he's a founder member of Aufstehen. So um, that's basically the reason why we've invited him uh, to talk uh, this evening. So um, please, uh, yeah, Steve. So, um, good evening. I've never actually done anything about Aufstehen in English. <laughs> and I'm a little bit unused to it, and I know that sometimes actually hearing people who aren't English talking English is easier to understand than people who are English talking English. And we are, uh, so if there's anything, just, just stick up your hand, don't be shy, and I'll say a couple of words in German to fill in the gap. Habt ihr das verstanden? So, go. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, so I, I joined Labour when I was 16. I was out at 18, I went to university, we had a thing called the poll tax. Thatcher wanted a flat tax. Everybody should pay exactly the same tax to fund local government. And Britain was up in arms because it was so fundamentally unfair. And it was a huge big campaign. Can't pay, won't pay, non-payment of the poll tax. Millions of people didn't pay. I was involved in that. And the Labour Party had nothing better to do than to try with all its might to suppress this campaign. And I was out of there, and really, it was just, I, for 20 years I've had to met someone who said they were from Labour, it was like, Whoa! It was just so, so deeply disappointing and ugh, horrible. And um, I left, and I was wrong. You know, a couple of old guys sort of stuck it out, like, keep the red flag flying in, you've got to be kidding. And, you know, they were people like John McDonnell and Jeremy Corbyn. And then suddenly in 2015, there's a Labour leadership election, and they changed the rules. Suddenly, it's direct democracy. It's one member, one vote. Everybody gets a vote. And we've got like, you know, three other guys with fantastic fingernails, great smiles, really good sort of sound bites. And you've got Jeremy Corbyn, who was always against the wars and always against the cuts. And in six weeks, 150,000 people joined the Labour Party and he was voted in with an overwhelming landslide majority to lead the party, not just by these new members, but by the old members as well. You suddenly see that Great Britain, where we thought, oh God, Britain, never anything going to happen here, I'll go live in Germany. <laughs> so actually, the third, because we are living on the brink of a catastrophe, yeah? climate collapse is coming, we've got 12 years. Inequality is spiralling to obscene levels. It's a man-made crisis, just like the climate crisis, which is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 25 billionaires own as much as half of the world put together. In the last year, they got 12% richer. The bottom half got 11% poorer. It's not very difficult to do the maths where they got the money from. Governments have been actively transferring wealth from the bottom to the top. And it's not just wealth, it's power. And that's why direct democracy, suddenly, one member, one vote, Bang, it all exploded. And where we thought we had this ossified, crusty old system where nothing would ever change, suddenly a door opened and then everything is possible. And we've seen the same thing in the States where suddenly people have realised you've got the machine politics of the Democrat Party, but you know what? It doesn't take actually that many people. We can go out on the streets and we can campaign and maybe Bernie loses, but then Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is going to win and then maybe next time around Bernie's going to win and everything is possible. There is everything to play for. And this, this hope, you can win, had the German left has completely forgotten. Completely. The idea you can win. You know, the link on, you know, the SPD, self-destruct, I joined the SPD, I ran the North Orkle EFAL campaign against the Grand Coalition last year. You know, on Facebook, just a couple of sort of volunteers, we walked it. And we, we just, if you look at what the 
the SPD tried to post, we have as much reach as the SPD official site, you know, backed up by legions of staffers. We had just as much reach, and everything that we posted out, we had in one week, we had a million views. The SPD, they just, whatever they posted, it was just, boom, it was just the comments underneath were appalling to see. Uh, uh, whereas, you know, everything, people desperately want change. And yet, the left in Germany has completely, if I may say so, completely failed to articulate this profound desire for change. And a lot of those people are going to the extreme right, which is not good. I hope we're all agreeing, yeah? And at the same time, you've got, and because of the electoral system, which is different, you know, in both Britain and America, we have basically two party systems. So it's always been possible, you know, back from, everybody's still bitter here about 1914 and 1918 and 1919 and was it looks, and all everybody's still really upset. But all that um, energy has always meant that new parties have been founded. And it's very understandable. I would have joined another party. There was no future for me in Labour already in the early 90s. I was out. And I probably would have joined another party, but there just wasn't one available, so I emigrated. But here you've had these other parties. So you've had, you know, the Spatakistan and the KPD and then the Greens and the Vinyalski and whatever. And with the result, bang, 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 each time it creates a party bureaucracy, you know, we have the iron law of oligarchy, das Ehrengesetz der Oligarchie. People live from politics, not for politics. That is also, unfortunately, a thing. And everybody starts defending their little fiefdom. And you end up with a little series of campfires. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm here, and, well, we don't like them. And this is really endemic to the left, yeah? So I don't want to be rude, but, like, with Corbyn and Labour... <laughs> I'm being rude. It's bit in English, you say, if you're about to be rude, you start by saying, I don't want to be rude, but... <laughs> so with Corbyn and Labour, actually, a lot of the really great stuff is not necessarily the old members who've been kind of slogging it out here and... It's all these new members! They don't really care if you're a Trotskyist or a Stalinist, and then, uh, you know, and the Trotskyists have got so many splits, you know, there's those Trotskyists against those Trotskyists, and they have very different positions on the Near East. You know, and whatever. And, and they just don't care. They want a government which is going to stop the cuts and stop the wars. Which is a good thing, right? And I would appeal to you. So, I was in Berlin last summer. Um, there was a Labour shadow minister here. And I bumped in from someone from the League and said, we're going to do the social movement. It's going to be for Freeland, for Eschkeit, for peace and social justice. I am not a member of the Linker. To be honest, every time I come near, all the internal fractional stuff is kind of... Ooh, yeah, it doesn't... A lot of people being unpleasant to each other doesn't seem like a lot of fun. And, you know, we've got problems inside Labour as well. Serious problems. But uh, it doesn't seem like much fun. Um, I'm not... You know, a, a fan of Zara Wagenknecht. I do not follow the, the, the amount of people who read stuff religiously. Everything she writes in order to criticise it is astonishing. She is imbued with magical powers that she's taken over people's heads, and she's sort of, you know, it's to be honest, a slightly sexist uh, archetype going with some sort of ice queen who has got a sort of amazing manipulative uh, faculty. I am not, frankly, interested. The the um, Alfwolf, the call to action for Aufstehen was about free and Reichlichkeit. It's not about migration, yeah? There are different points of view on migration. Frankly, I think by Labour's point of view on migration at the moment, I don't think it's very good. It's friending free movement, yeah? But I don't see people complaining about Jeremy Corbyn within the Linker. I don't agree with Wagenknecht. I think that by creating a category of illegal immigrants, that you split the working class, you know, that these people are made more precarious. But for God's sake, I want something to happen. And if someone else, if Katja Kipping had asked me, I'd have gone along with that one too. I'm not that bothered. The world is going to die in 12 years. Inequality is that big. And everybody sat around their little campfires going, nah, 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 nah. yeah? And then we have, like my wife's family comes from Paderborn. I'm all right for time, yeah? My wife's, they, see, she, they, they come from the countryside near Paderborn. Now, if you've been to the countryside in Ostwestfalen and Lippo, to little villages, there aren't a lot of left-wing people there, yeah? But if you talk to them, I think they are not rich people. And they've all got diesels. They've not got diesels because they hate the environment. And they go shopping at Aldi, they don't go shopping for the all, you know, organic food because they don't care about that. Frankly, they can't afford it. The bus goes three times a day to the village. If you want to go to work, 
If you want to go and pick up the kids, you've got to go with a car. So they all buy cheap diesels because they're cheaper to run. Just like the Gilets Jaunes, yeah? Macron whacked on this fuel tax, having cut wealth tax, abolished wealth tax, having cut taxes for the rich. And this fuel tax that they imposed on the French people, it didn't go into some special eco form. No, it just went into the general tax fund. So they, diesel drivers, poor people in the countryside in France, were meant to be financing Macron's tax cuts for the rich. Yeah? And you go, oh, they're all anti urkel they're all against some ecological impulse. No, they're not against it, they just can't afford it. And that is the thing, if you actually go and read what they're saying, they don't, well, they want to stop all these hypermarché, which, you know, these huge supermarkets we've been built out of town, because you only go shopping in your car these days. All the little shops, like it is in the countryside in Germany, all the little shops have all closed down. You can't walk to the shops anymore. So this is the thing, how do we actually talk to people? who live in the countryside and who probably haven't met very many foreigners. Now, we all know that phenomenon, that racism is usually strongest in places, or hatred of, or not, well, fear of migrants is usually strongest in the places where there aren't very many migrants. Now, I'm born in London, and I live in Cologne, and both multicultural cities, just, just not an issue. And I'm, I'm sure it's mostly the same in Berlin. I, I've never lived here, yeah? But, it is different out in the countryside, but often, you know, the way they greet people. When my mum grew up in Somerset, she saw her first black man when she was 15. And the greeting was something like, you know, that's it. And she honestly didn't know. Now, this is not because they are morally bad people. Yet we have developed a reaction on the left. We have two ways of reacting to racism. And the first is, <laughs> yeah? And the other is, yeah? And we see that with all the Gelb Fest and the Gilets Jaunes, the Yellow Fest, I don't know what you call them in English, but when they're out on the streets, you know, yes, there are fascists and racists among them, as there are fascists and racists within our society. What are you going to do about it? If you say, well, no, there, there, there might be a racist, yeah, it's like a hygienic impulse. I don't want to dirty myself with any of this. So quickly run away and leave this movement, this incredible social movement, which has risen up, with the demand for direct democracy that these huge fundamental inequalities in our society will finally be overthrown, well, we're going to leave them to the extreme right. I'm sorry, that is not a very clever idea. We have to go in and we have to talk to people. And this is the problem. A lot of the people, let's say, around Paderborn, I'm, I'm doing the people of Paderborn a huge injustice, but of many people in parts of Germany who are simply not used to migrants, is if they say, oh, it's vice of need, yeah? If they don't, if they're worried about the flushing sign because they've read something in the Bild Zeitung, so if they're rough, worried about the refugee accommodation because they've read something in Bild, that, that, that either there's this hysterical, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist, or I'm not going to talk to you. It is possible to change people's minds. If you look at, say, the work of the Los Angeles LGBT Centre, they did this active canvassing, talking to people about gay marriage, Talking to people about transphobia, by engaging people in a serious conversation, it is possible to change people's minds. And that's something that we seem to have forgotten. And if I talk, like my, my mother-in-law, she comes from there. And it's, um, she's really pissed off about pensions. You know, it is simply too low. There are so many pensions there living on less than a thousand euros a month. They can't do it. Yeah? There are so many people there you know, whose jobs are precarious, who are doing two or three jobs, both mother and father are working, they've some, somehow got to juggle with getting kids to, you know, to care centres in the day. It's really tricky, yeah? We need to talk to them, we need to be winning them from, for the left, because if you do not win them for the left, they will be won by the right, and the right are out there. And it's not difficult, there is a narrative that we can tell, because there are two questions, and actually, that's why, We've been doing lots of stuff with yellow vests and stuff like that. It's really cool because it's really simple. Do you want to kick down to people who are worse off or do you want to kick up the powers up there? And if you pose that question, so many people, and they can be from, you know, they can be protest voters who want to vote for the AFD, they say, no, I want to kick up. And then they understand we will only win. We will only win if we all stand together. It doesn't matter what sex you are, it doesn't matter what sexuality you are, it doesn't matter what race or where you come from. The only thing that is going to guarantee 
our, our success is standing together. And then it doesn't become a moralizing question. It becomes a question of a desperately needed hope of winning. And hope of winning is what it's all about. When people see, God, all I've got to do is put on a yellow vest, go down to a roundabout and set fire to a tyre, and I can push back against Macron, they'll do it. But we have failed on the left to offer people that chance of change. In Britain it came when people see, oh, I just need to pay a few pounds and I can join the Labour Party and vote for Jeremy Corbyn. I'll do it. And then when the, the MPs tried a coup against him a year later and all the papers were against him, people said, you know what? I can't trust the news media. They're all just trying. It's just such a load of fake news against Corbyn all the time. You know what? I'm going to go online. I'm going to start campaigning for Corbyn. I'm not going to accept it. And that is, there is such power out there. And that power at the moment in Germany has only been channeled by the far right. Yeah? Every time that Oli Welke goes onto the Heute Schule and sort of makes fun of Saxon accents and says they're all IFD and they're all racist. You can just see the people queuing up to join far-right sites. We are driving voters into their arms. And, we, and I think we've got to finish, but we live in a country, in Germany, and I think it's probably even more, and Britain is a terribly class-ridden society, but in Germany, we have a social apartheid. 50% of people go to grammar schools, gymnasium, and 50% of people don't. And the political parties, are by and for and with the people who went to grammar schools and most of you went to universities. Yeah? And maybe it's completely different by the linker, and I really hope it is. But if you go down to the SPD, well, first of all, you're lucky if you get to talk to nas about national politics at all. But if you do, then it's this really abstract intellectual stuff. And where is the space for someone to say, I have to eat from a food bank? Where is that space? Are those people genuinely welcome? Because we need to build an alliance of care and of love for one another. And unfortunately, in this intellectual atmosphere, what you have now is a vehicle for the educated to rule over the rest. And that extends across the party spectrum. So I'd appeal to you. I, I, if Alshir works or doesn't work, I don't care. Something has got to happen. Whatever comes along, I'll try. I go out the door in Cologne, in the centre of the city, in the morning, and there are pensioners plucking eight-cent beer bottles out of the trash. Yeah, they got, by there they've got little torches and little hooks to get them out. A yeah? hundred bottles. You know what that weighs? How dirty that is. And you get eight euros. It's not even minimum wage. Yeah? And it takes a lot longer than an hour if you're lucky enough to get a hundred bottles. I go out the door in Cologne in the morning with a dog and there are people to see sleeping on the street. And that has to stop. And this is a language that we need to find. Sorry, this stops now. And the Gilets Jaunes, their first thing, keine Obdachlosigkeit, no more homelessness. It stops now. And that is what I care about. I don't care about some position of, yeah, but Zara Wagner, Oscar Lafontaine, well, in 1993, he said something that was silly. Yeah, no, yeah I, probably. I just care about what works. Now, maybe Alstein won't work. I'm doing my best. But I invite you, all of you, we need to über unseren eigenen Schatten springen, which is to um, get over ourselves. <laughs> we need to get over ourselves and make something happening because change is coming. The school kids are on strike. That's a pre-revolutionary moment. It's a, such a radical act for a kid to go on strike. Something has to happen. And we have to show there is genuine possibility for everybody. Not just the school kids, and they're mostly people who go to the you know, posher grammar schools, you know, more engaging with abstract ideas like climate change. We need to show that kids who have to rely on food banks, that pensioners who have to live with plucking beer bottles out of bins, that they are welcome, that they have a voice that their contribution is also our contribution, that they are just as valuable as we are. As socialists, that's what we owe them, and I would appeal to you all, whatever you do, whether it's Alshin, whatever, you know, get one of these. This is a sign of hope. And just because there was one racist down the road, if you run away from this, you're running away from the revolution. 
Paul Mason wrote recently, I, I'm, I'm not brainy enough to have read all this stuff, but uh, there's a big difference between Rosa Luxemburg and Lenin. Lenin believed in the vanguard party, that essentially the masses were only going to rise up because the clever party told them what to do. And Rosa Luxemburg said, no, the masses are going to rise up because modern life is no longer acceptable. And Rosa was right. That's what we're seeing today. And that's not our job as a party to say, well, you've got to follow me. Our job is to go out and say, I'm with them. I'm with them. I'm with you. We can do better. Let's change the world. Translating and well, there's a lot of things to say. The last speaker is going to be Christina Buchholz. Christina is a, an MP for the, for the Linka. She's a member of the party national executive. For people who came late, if you, Christina's going to be speaking in German. If you have problems with German, we've got all sorts of people here who will translate it for you. Um, and there's a, a, few, a few seats here. So, um, yeah, if you want to know. And Christina, the translators asked, can you have power to pauses so they can, um, yeah, so they can translate properly? Okay, ich versuche es und wenn ihr mir das vorher gesagt hättet, hätte ich auch meinen Beitrag auf Englisch vorbereitet, aber ähm, jetzt ist es auf Deutsch, vielleicht kann ich nachher auch auf Englisch ähm, reagieren. Ähm, vielleicht vorneweg, ähm, ich glaube, dass die Entwicklung ähm, in Frankreich, die Gilets jaunes, ähm, eine absolut äh, wichtige Entwicklung war. Wir haben auch als Linke uns mit diesen Protesten sofort solidarisiert und die Repression, ähm, die ausgeübt worden ist, ähm, scharf kritisiert. Und ich glaube, es ist auch wichtig, dass Linke in Frankreich Teil dieser Bewegung sind, weil es natürlich auch darum geht, diese Bewegung zu unterstützen, aber auch in der Bewegung für richtige Forderungen, linke Forderungen und auch gegen Rassismus, Verschwörungstheorien und andere ähm, ja, andere Ideologien zu kämpfen, die letztendlich schädlich sind für so eine Bewegung. Deswegen glaube ich, ist der Platz von Linken in, ähm, in Frankreich selbstverständlich ähm, äh, Teil dieser Bewegung und wie gesagt, die Linke hat sich solidarisch erklärt mit dieser Bewegung. Das Zweite, was ich sagen möchte, ist, dass ich ähm, sehr, sehr beeindruckt bin. Ich habe die Politik in Großbritannien auch viele Jahre verfolgt und ähm, der, der, der Schwung und äh, die Dynamik, die Jeremy Corbyn ähm, entfacht hat und die ähm, ja, die, die vielen, vielen ähm, Menschen, die ähm, zu Labour geströmt sind, ähm, ähm, das ist eine absolut äh, wichtige Entwicklung, die wir auch als Linke hier sehr stark reflektiert haben, weil es gezeigt hat, dass es einen absoluten Bedarf gibt, etwas von der klassischen neoliberal gewendeten, ähm, also eine Alternative zur klassischen neoliberal gewendeten so Sozialdemokratie zu machen. Ich glaube, wir sind uns hier auf dem Podium einig, dass es ähm, Protest, Widerstand, Klassenkämpfe gegen diese neoliberale Politik brauchen, dass es selbstverständlich ist, dass diejenigen Menschen, die am meisten unter dieser Politik ähm, leiden, als Erwerbslose, als Arbeiterinnen, als ähm, Arbeiter in unterschiedlichen Bereichen, dass die die Subjekte der Veränderung sein müssen. Das, ist, das ist, möchte ich vorneweg sagen und ich glaube auch, dass wir uns erstmal einig in der Aufgabenstellung sind, dass ähm, das Stoppen der extremen Rechten in Europa ähm, und in Deutschland das Stoppen des Aufstieges der AfD, das Zurückdrängen der AfD, dass es eine existenzielle Frage für uns auch ist als Linke. Und ich glaube nur, die Frage, wie wir das konkret auf die Situation in Deutschland bezogen diskutieren, dass wir da komplett unterschiedliche Einschätzungen haben. Und jetzt mache ich kurz mal... Falls, falls jemand es nicht versteht, dass ich oder wir, wir dazu gehen, weil sie, du redest mit so einer Energie, also ich habe es auch auf aber ich werde den Faden verlieren, wenn ich das nicht gleich also Ich kann auch an diesem Simultan zu sagen, das ist vielleicht dann insgesamt weniger Zeit. Ja, okay. Ja? Gerne. Ja? Well, um, perhaps you can translate the last bits while we're sorting this out. Okay, yeah, so I'm just... Um, oh, just let's read the ASM. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, mach ich weiter. Ich, um, ich werde gleich das vielleicht ein bisschen thesenhaft um, machen, weil ich glaube, wir müssen uns schon sehr ähm, mit der Situation in Deutschland selbst beschäftigen und ähm, ich glaube, all die Ansprüche ähm, und Anforderungen, die Steve eben sehr plastisch dargestellt hat, ähm, entsprechen nicht dem, was meiner Einschätzung ähm, der 
der Bewegung ähm, aufstehend ist und ich möchte ähm, an mehreren Punkten deutlich machen, warum ich glaube, dass wir eine komplett andere Situation haben, dass wir andere Antworten finden müssen, wie wir gemeinsame Schritte machen, sowohl gegen ähm, Sozialabbau und soziale Spaltung zu kämpfen und den Rechtsruck ähm, zurückzudrängen. Äh, zu, zu das erste, meine These ist, dass ähm, in Deutschland ähm, die, die Linke letztendlich die Sammlungsbewegung war, die jetzt ein Stück weit nachgeholt wird in anderen ähm, Ländern. Wir hatten den Einschnitt in Deutschland mit ähm, der rot-grünen Bundesregierung, mit der Agenda 2010, ähm, die zu einer massiven ähm, Bewegung auf der Straße geführt hat. Wir hatten die Proteste, viele waren von euch wahrscheinlich auch schon hier, wir hatten die Proteste gegen die Hartz-IV-Reform, wir hatten die Montagsdemonstrationen, wir hatten ähm, Brüche innerhalb ähm, der SPD, ähm, die die tatsächlich rein ins gewerkschaftliche Lager vor allem, vor allem ging. Und wir hatten in dem Zusammenhang, ähm, ja, in diesem Kontext hat sich ähm, die, die Parteigründung der Linken vollzogen, als einer Partei, die im Westen stark gewerkschaftlich und aus sozialen Bewegungen kommen war und im, West, äh, im Osten aus der, ähm, aus der damaligen ähm, PDS. Ähm, ich glaube, dass wir ähm, sehen müssen, dass dieses, dieses, die Sammlungsbewegung ähm, war, die letztendlich ähm, einen entscheidenden oder einen wichtigen, ähm, sozusagen wichtigen Umschwung auch gebracht hat, ähm, als Bezugspunkt für ähm, Linke ähm, in Deutschland, die sich ähm, letztendlich auf diese Linke bezogen haben. Der Einschnitt, den die Agenda 2010 bedeutet hat, macht uns heute noch zu schaffen und wir haben viele Kämpfe, soziale Kämpfe in Krankenhäusern, in Kommunen gegen die Privatisierung von Wohnraum, die Folge dieser Politik sind. Das zweite was ich sagen möchte, ist auch den Versuch, jetzt zehn Jahre später dieses Momentum ähm, zu wiederholen. Und ich glaube, ähm, das ist aus ungewissermaßen anzuknüpfen an auch Bewegungen, die, die international laufen. Ich glaube aus mehreren Gründen, das funktioniert nicht. Und Steve, wenn du hier auch sehr deutlich oder sehr, sehr hohe Ansprüche formulierst, dann musst du auch über eine Bilanz ähm, der Bewegung reden, musst darüber reden, dass man versucht hat, die Gilets jaunes gewissermaßen zu ähm, kopieren. Letzte Woche sind Zweite oder Wochenende sind, glaube ich, 2000 Leute bundesweit auf der Straße äh, gewesen. Und ich glaube, man kann keine Bewegung importieren. Man kann nicht die Situation, wie sie in anderen Ländern ist, kopieren aus eine auf eine Situation, wie sie in Deutschland ist. Und wir müssen ähm, sehen, dass wir als Ergebnis eines jahrelangen neoliberalen Raubhaus in Deutschland, wo die Agenda 2010 ein wichtiger Teil war, ähm, wir ähm, eine Spaltung haben und gleichzeitig ähm, eine, ähm, eine Situation wegen der wirtschaftlichen Sondersituation in Deutschland, in Europa, dass wir momentan keine großen verallgemeinerten Angriffe, anders als in Frankreich, haben und gleichzeitig keine Klassenkämpfe, keine großen Klassenkämpfe neben sozusagen den vielen wichtigen kleinen lokalen Kämpfen und auch Kämpfen in einzelnen Bereichen, wie beispielsweise in den Krankenhäusern, die ein, ähm, ein vergleichbarer Rückenwind für eine Bewegung äh, wären, wie es damals die Proteste gegen die Agenda 2010 und gegen die Hartz-IV-Reform waren. Das, finde ich, muss man erstmal konstatieren, weil man muss sich eine ehrliche Rechenschaft über die politische Lage und äh, über die Situation hier in Deutschland ähm, ähm, äh, ablegen, wenn man überlegt, wie man auch Erfahrungen, die man anderswo gemacht hat, übertragen kann. Und ehrlich gesagt, mir mutet es grotesk an, wenn ich ähm, also die Fraktionsvorsitzende meiner Fraktion in einer gelben Weste alleine vor dem Kanzleramt ähm, stehen sehe. Das ist als großes Bild auf eurer Homepage. Das zeigt den Widerspruch. Es gibt diese Bewegung hier nicht. Natürlich wollen wir sie, aber die Frage ist, wie kommen wir dahin, dass wir auch eine verallgemeinerte Bewegung ähm, ähm, gegen Neoliberalismus und gegen soziale Angriffe bekommen. Ich glaube nicht, dass es auf diese auf diese Art und Weise geht. Man kann keine Bewegung von oben initiieren, die nicht angedockt ist an, ähm, äh, an wichtige Teile vom außerparlamentarischen Protest. Und das ist sozusagen meine zweite Kritik. Wir arbeiten als Linke sehr stark und ich mache das auch ähm, schon seit Jahren in verschiedenen Bereichen, dass wir sehr, sehr eng mit sozialen Bewegungen in Gewerkschaften, in antirassistischen Bewegungen arbeiten, als Teil dieser Bewegung. Wir haben immer für unser Recht auch gestritten, dass wir auch als Partei Teil von Bewegungen sein können und gleichzeitig auch unsere eigenen Positionen und Forderungen ähm, treten können. Aber das, was ich erlebe, ähm, was in der Realität ähm, unter dem Label Aufstehen passiert, ist, dass ähm, man sich draufsetzt auf Bewegung, 
aber nicht organischer Teil der Entwicklung von Bewegungen und Kämpfen ist. Ich möchte es an einem Beispiel deutlich machen. Wir haben hier in Berlin ähm, das, ähm, sozusagen die, die Initiative ähm, hier mit der, mit der Deutsch, Enteignet Deutsche Wohnen. Ähm, das ist ein großes Bündnis, es wird sogar von der Linken unterstützt. Ähm, und äh, was hat es. Nein, das wird sogar von der Linken, das finde ich wichtig, weil anders als in der Vergangenheit hat die ähm, Linke, die hier in der Regierung ist, ähm, hat ähm, äh, auch eine problematische Be Politik in Bezug auf die Privatisierung von Pro Wohnraum gefahr äh, gefahren. Und dass sie, das, dass sie jetzt Teil dieser Bewegung ist, selbst in der Regierung, das wollte ich damit deutlich machen, ist absolut wichtig. Für mich ist es selbstverständlich, dass man Teil einer solchen Bewegung sein muss. Ähm, die Gruppe von Aufstehen hat ähm, sozusagen sich, sich sozusagen des Labels be be bemächtigt, eine Aktion vor der Geschäftsstelle der Deutsche Wohnen gemacht, nicht abgesprochen mit den Initiatoren. Der, der Kampagne und ich finde, das geht nicht. Das geht nicht. Das hat total, total Irritationen geführt und natürlich ähm, ist das keine, kein Verständnis von dem, wie ich ähm, die Rolle auch sehe von, von, ähm, von dem ähm, kollegialen und solidarischen Aufbau ähm, von ähm, Bewegungen. Ähm, du hast gesprochen über die Linke, du hast sie ähm, kar ähm, ähm, karikiert ähm, als sozusagen ein ähm, ich kann das jetzt nicht wörtlich übersetzen, aber als einen ähm, langweiligen Haufen vergleichbar mit der SPD. Und ich will ähm, ein, ähm, ein, ähm, ein differenziertes Bild ähm, davon zeigen. Okay, vielleicht noch einen Punkt zurück, weil ich finde, ähm, was wir nicht vergessen dürfen, wenn wir über Bewegung reden, ähm, reden wir über die größte Bewegung, ähm, die momentan in Deutschland und die sich letztes Jahr in Deutschland gegeben hat. Das war der Sommer des Antirassismus. Das waren die 250.000 Menschen, die in Berlin unter dem Hashtag und Heilbar demonstriert haben. Und ich weiß auch, dass es Menschen gab, die die Aufstehen unterstützen, die sich nicht dem Votum von einigen Leuten an der Spitze angeschlossen haben, nämlich sich nicht an der Demonstration, sich zu entsolidarisieren von der Demonstration. Ich finde das sehr gut, ich habe das auch sehr begrüßt. Aber es zeigt schon ein Problem, dass da, wo momentan die größte Bewegung, die größte Dynamik passiert, dass es keine organische Verbindung von Aufstehen mit dieser Bewegung geht. Und das ist anders mit der Linken als Partei, wobei ich auch durchaus einen, einen, einen sozusagen kritischen Blick und auch eine Herausforderung sehe, wie wir als Linke auf die Herausforderungen reagieren können. Aber ich glaube, sozusagen einfach die, die Karikatur zu zeigen, die Linke ist ein ähm, sozusagen ein langweiliger Haufen, der vor allen Dingen sich dadurch auszeichnet, dass er interne Streitigkeiten irgendwie auszufechten hat, wird der Realität nicht ähm, gerecht. Wir haben eine Partei, die in den letzten zwei Jahren ähm, gewachsen ist, ähm, 17.000 Mitglieder, übrigens sind zwei Drittel Mitglieder unter 35 Jahre. Wir haben in ähm, unterschiedlichen, wir haben natürlich ein völlig unterschiedliches Bild in unterschiedlichen Landesverbänden, in unterschiedlichen Kreisverbänden. Wir haben gerade in Hessen, ähm, das ist mein Landesverband, haben wir sehr viele, sehr aktivistische, sehr eng mit lokalen Bewegungen ähm, verbundene ähm, Kreisverbände und, und, und aktiven Strukturen. Ähm, und wir haben gleichzeitig ein Problem, was übrigens auch Labour und übrigens auch Labour unter Corbyn auch in Zukunft haben will, noch mehr, wenn er auch noch irgendwann in der Regierung sein würde, nämlich, dass es natürlich das Problem der Parlamentarisierung ähm, gibt und ähm, eine, ähm, eine Fokussierung von einer parlamentarischen Partei auf Wahlen, eine Fokussierung einer äh, parlamentarischen Partei ähm, auf ähm, Mandate ähm, und all diese Dinge. Bloß ich verstehe einerseits nicht, ähm, warum du glaubst oder du zumindest den Eindruck erwächst, dass das ein Phänomen sei, was dann auch der, 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 der Corbyn Labour Partei irgendwie völlig fremd sein sollte. Und ähm, vor allen Dingen frage ich mich, wie man dann ähm, dazu kommt, sozusagen an einem Regierungsprogramm zu arbeiten, ähm, des, dessen Skizze ich jetzt eben mal mir auch angeguckt hat, also was zumindest jetzt, was die inhaltliche Grundlage auch wirtschaftspolitisch sozusagen weit hinter dem zurückliegt, was ich jetzt als Linke für Minimum irgendwie halten würde, aber was ein Regierungsprogramm, also was ein Regierungsprogramm sein soll, ich glaube, ohne die Kräfteverhältnisse in diesem Land tatsächlich von unten zu verändern, wirst du auch an der Regierung keine fundamentale Änderung herbeiführen können. Und von daher glaube ich, die ganze Orientierung auf ähm, ein Regierungsprogramm, ähm, auf eventuell dann sozusagen eine ähm, Kanzlerschaft, ähm, von wem auch immer, ähm, kann man sich dann ja irgendwie fantasieren, finde ich, ist eine völlig falsche ähm, 
ähm, völlig falsche Orientierung angesichts der Herausforderungen, die wir äh, bei der Entwicklung von sozialen, ähm, ja, sozialen Kräfteverhältnissen haben. Ähm, der Punkt, der mir ähm, vielleicht hier an der Stelle am wichtigsten ist, ähm, ist die Frage, wie reagieren wir auf ähm, den Aufstieg der AfD. Und ich finde wichtig, nochmal zur Analyse, ähm, dass wir mit dem Aufstieg der AfD ähm, eine Situation haben, ähm, dass in Deutschland eine Partei, in der Nazis und Faschisten immer mehr an Einfluss gewinnen. Ähm, eine, eine Partei, die ähm, ja, inzwischen, in, gerade in Ostdeutschland, aber natürlich auch jetzt im Bundestag, mh, relevante äh, Prozentsätze gewonnen hat, dass, ähm, dass wir so ernsthaft darüber reden müssen, wie wir diese Partei zurückdrängen müssen. Und ich sehe deinen Anspruch absolut, dass wir ähm, die, die AfD zurückzudrängen, ich glaube aber, dass die, die Verkürzung auf, ähm, wir müssen anders ähm, mit den Menschen reden und Politik wieder für sie ähm, greifbar und verständlich machen ähm, und sie in ihren sozialen Interessen bestärken, das ist richtig. Aber ich glaube, das geht am Kern der Herausforderung vorbei. Und deswegen ist es auch nicht banal, darüber zu reden, was Lafontaine Feld 93 gemacht hat. Da hat Lafontaine nämlich dem Asylkompromiss äh, mit zugestimmt. Also ein Nachgeben ähm, gegenüber einer sozusagen rechten ähm, Entwicklung, die meines Erachtens eine falsche Antwort ist auf den Aufstieg der Rechten, ähm, mit einer Verschärfung von Gesetzen ähm, gegen ähm, geflüchtete Verschärfung des Asylrechts zu, zu reagieren. Das sind dieselben Argumente, die jetzt im Kontext der Gründung von Aufstehen wieder gespielt wurden von mehreren Leuten, auch von Oskar Lafontaine. Und als Linke widerspreche ich da ganz deutlich, weil ich glaube, dass wir die Rechte dann nur geschlagen bekommen, wenn wir einerseits den Kampf gegen Rassismus und den Kampf für soziale Gerechtigkeit miteinander verbinden. Und wir müssen konstatieren, dass in Deutschland in den letzten Jahren es einen massiven Wachstum von Rassismus gegeben hat. Da haben verschiedene ähm, Leute eine wichtige Rolle gespielt. Da hat Thilo Sarrazin ähm, mit seinem Buch Deutschland sch äh, schafft sich ab eine Rolle gespielt. Wir haben einen massiven Anstieg sowohl von antimuslimischem Rassismus als auch ähm, Antiziganismus. Wir haben einen latenten Antisemitismus in, dieser ähm, in diesem Land. Und das heißt, wenn wir ähm, in dem Bemühen, die Rechte zurückzudrängen, schweigen zum Thema Rassismus, und das ist nicht das, was du machst, aber ich, äh, das, was du sagst. Aber ich sehe in den Papieren, in den Veröffentlichungen ähm, von Aufstehen, wird dieses Thema ausgespart. Man positioniert sich einmal, kostet auch nicht viel, gegen Rassismus und Nationalismus, aber man geht ähm, die Herausforderung nicht an, ähm, tatsächlich deutlich zu machen, dass wir ähm, die Spaltungsideologie bekämpfen müssen. Dann werden wir nicht ähm, gewinnen. Und ich glaube, dann werden wir die AfD nicht zurückdrängen und dann werden wir die Leute auch nicht ähm, gewinnen. Dass die AfD jetzt teilweise in Umfragen wieder schwächer wird, liegt auch daran, dass es die starke Bewegung gegen Rechts gibt. Das liegt daran, dass wir zum Beispiel in Städten wie in Chemnitz organisiert uns Nazis entgegengestellt haben. Und ja, es ist wichtig, sozusagen nicht den Nachbarn, der rassistische Ideen im Kopf hat, zu konfrontieren und äh, sozusagen den Rassismusvorwurf um den Kopf zu werfen. Aber es ist wichtig, ähm, Nazis entgegenzutreten, ähm, weil ich glaube, das ist der einzige Weg, dass wir ähm, sie zurückdrängen. Weil ihre Strategie ist, ähm, auch über, ähm, über die Straße, über das Einrichten von Bürgerzentren, wie wir das in vielen äh, in ostdeutschen Städten erleben, tatsächlich Raum zu greifen, die Straße zu leben und das Klima in der Gesellschaft ähm, zu, zu ähm, verändern. Ich habe in Offenbach... Ähm, ähm, wo mein Wahlkreis ist, gibt es eine Tafel, es gab eine Debatte über die Tafel in Hessen, ähm, weil es dort einen, ähm, den Leiter der Tafel gab, der ähm, die Leute nach deutscher oder nicht deutscher Herkunft sozusagen sortieren wollte. In Offenbach an der Tafel sagen die Leute ganz klar, und ich meine, die, die sind alles, das sind Menschen, die alle ähm, nichts haben, selbst von Hartz IV leben und solidarisch sind, ähm, dass es Leute schämen sollte, die hier verantwortlich sind für diese neoliberale Politik. Dort wird ganz klar gesagt, wir unterscheiden die Leute nicht nach ihrer Herkunft. Hier kriegt jeder was. Wir haben andere Mechanismen, um vielleicht auch mit Konflikten umzugehen. Und ich finde, es ist so wichtig, dass ähm, ein, ähm, eine Bewegung, die den Anspruch hat, ähm, für soziale Gerechtigkeit zu sorgen und die Leute zu, 
zu ihren, die, die Leute zu stärken, ähm, anzugehen gegen die Ungerechtigkeiten, dass diese tatsächlich sich auch als, als Teil der Bewegung gegen Rassismus, als Teil von Unteilbar, als Teil der vielen, vielen Mobilisierung gegen Rechts versteht. Und da gibt es von auch den meines Erachtens keine klaren Signale, beziehungsweise eher Signale in die falsche Richtung. Also, ich glaube, dass die Themen, an denen wir hier in Deutschland in dieser Situation ähm, ähm, Kämpfe führen müssen, die vielen sozialen Kampagnen sind, wo die Neo neoliberale Politik durchsteckt in den Alltag, wie beispielsweise bei der Deutschen Wohnen, wie in den Krankenhäusern. Wir haben wichtige Debatte auch in den Gewerkschaften. Wir haben gerade von der Rosa-Luxemburg-Stiftung die, ich glaube, vierte oder fünfte Konferenz Erneuerung durch Streik gehabt, ähm, weil es eine wichtige Entwicklung ist, auch in den Gewerkschaften den Einfluss der sozialdemokratischen Idee der, der Sozialpartnerschaft zurückzudrängen und zu kämpferischen Gewerkschaften zu kommen. Ich glaube, dass wir Einheitsfronten bilden müssen und selbstverständlich in diesen Bereichen zusammenarbeiten müssen, auch mit denjenigen Sozialdemokraten oder auch Grünen, die in anderen Punkten überhaupt nicht mit uns einig sind. Und ich glaube, dass die aktuelle Debatte in der SPD, wo es zumindest ein verbales Abrücken von der Agenda 2010 gibt, eigentlich eine Herausforderung ist, wo man gemeinsam sagen muss, dann lass uns aber auch gemeinsam kämpfen mit Gewerkschaften, mit Sozialverbänden, um diese Forderung umzusetzen. Und ähm, ich glaube, wir müssen gemeinsam kämpfen und das wäre meine Erwartung auch an, an euch, ähm, dass wir gemeinsam aufstehen gegen Rassismus, dass wir uns den, ähm, den Nazis entgegenstellen, ähm, dass wir aktiv ähm, Rassismus ähm, ähm, zurückweisen und ihr seid eingeladen, euch auch im Rahmen ähm, der Linken, aber auch in den gemeinsamen Bewegungen daran ähm, zu beteiligen. Wie gesagt, die Linke ähm, hat das Selbstverständnis einer aktivistischen Mitgliederpartei, es ist, nicht überall, ähm, ähm, es ist nicht überall perfekt. Ich glaube, wir müssen auch in der Linken viel ehrlicher eine Diskussion darüber führen, ähm, wie wir unsere Strukturen zum Werkzeug machen können, um soziale Kämpfe und ähm, soziale Bewegungen stark zu machen. Ich glaube, die Orientierung auf ähm, die politische Macht und auf die Regierungsbeteiligung ist die falsche, der falsche Ratgeber für diese Entwicklung. Ähm, unser Ziel ist es, Menschen zu aktivieren, weil sie letztendlich diejenigen sind, die die Kräfteverhältnisse in der Gesellschaft zu, ähm, zu verändern können. Ich freue mich, wenn wir an verschiedenen Punkten da gemeinsame Schritte gehen können. Aber ich glaube, dass ähm, ja, die Gründung von Aufstehen, selbst wenn man meint, man könnte damit gewisse Prozesse, die in anderen Ländern stattfinden, auf Deutschland übertragen können, einen Schritt in die falsche Richtung sind, weil es letztendlich ein Momentum, momentan wirkt Aufstehen als ein Momentum, ähm, also Momentum war eine, eine Bewegung oder ist eine Bewegung, die versucht die Labour Party nach, nach links zu bewegen. Momentan sehen wir, dass Aufstehen eigentlich keine Wirkung in die Sozialdemokratie und äh, in die Grünen hinein hat. Was die Wirkung ist, die wir momentan sehen, dass es Debatten gibt von rechts in die Linke rein. Dagegen wehren wir uns ähm, als, äh, als Linke und führen, ähm, führen Debatten, wie auch am letzten Wochenende, über unsere Position in der äh, Migrationspolitik und unser Selbstverständnis als Partei, die gegen Neoliberalismus und Rassismus gleichermaßen kämpft. Und ähm, ja, wir glauben, dass es die falsche Antwort ist. Und trotzdem freuen wir uns natürlich ähm, an jedem Punkt, wo wir gemeinsam äh, Kämpfe führen können. Und davon gibt es, denke ich, mehr als genug. your turn to make contribution and ask questions. A couple of things, try not to speak longer than two, for two or two, three minutes. If you start playing on, we'll chuck you up. Um, use within language whichever, uh, uh, within reason whichever language you want, so a contribution in German or the German or English. Um, and the speaker will come at the end, we'll try, we want to get some sort of flow in the debate, so um, put your hand, if you want to say something, put your hand up and we'll, and we'll, we'll call you. And also, yes, uh, if you don't want to be recorded, um, can you please indicate that? Um, and yeah, you will be recorded. There's a big microphone there at the back that you can use. Okay, one then, first and second, if you use that microphone, then it won't Well, um, thanks very much for the presentation, all of you. 
Um, my question goes to you, Steve. Um, I would like to refer about the topic as you mentioned as secondary in your presentation, and namely the immigration issue. Um, what's the plan of uh, Aufstein to um, got the um, what is it? the support of immigrant movements uh, after all the uh, positions that persons like Wagner, for example, has uh, put on the uh, on the agenda. Uh, I'm saying this because I, I don't know me as an immigrant at least I don't feel like quite comfortable to work with a, a, a organization that has uh, proposed a, a position as as Wagner, for example. Um, uh, that has proposed a, a, a position like the one of Wagner, uh, for example. Um, I don't know how, how yeah, that, that's mainly the idea because, um, um, yeah, only just to remind you, yeah, maybe you're, you're talking about like the, maybe the majorities of the, of the country, like the, the deep Germany, basically like in the, in the hinterland, for example, but uh, the uh, immigrant, um, yeah, the immigrant percentage in, in these countries is also quite big. And if we only concentrate on the majorities, like, well, what, what happened, for example, with the other minorities, for example? What happened if the day of tomorrow, uh, someone from Austria starts saying, yeah, but you know, maybe the LGBT uh, rights are not that important, which is focus on other issues. So, uh, I, I mean, for me, that's re quite really con con conflicting, uh, 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 to be honest. So, um, yeah, that's my question. If the speakers are okay with it, they'll write down things and come back. Um, maybe in the middle of them. There's a speaker here and then there's someone here. Um, yes, I, I try to do it in English. I'm uh, in it. I'm also part of uh, the link and uh, on board here in, in Berlin. And uh, I have also like the same question like the person before because um, uh, my uh, background is Turkish and I don't know anyone in Turkish community. In, my friends and families, they would, um, they feel that they uh, Aufstehen uh, is like um, talking to them or something. And also, I have to say that um, it was, it, it's also because uh, you say that you don't uh, have these positions, but also before uh, Aufstehen was built already, it started with uh, the big faces of Zara Wagner and Oskar Lafontaine and other people who was uh, doing uh, every two weeks critics uh, against uh, migration and also in the context of Aufstehen and also against uh, minority politics like gender politics or, or other minority politics. Um, and I felt uh, uh, as part of the Linke that it's more like also Christina say to make pressure uh, on our positions to open borders. That's our position still. So. Uh, that was my feeling, and also <clears throat> like um, uh, one of the big aims is like gaining back the AfD voters for sure. We also want to gain them back, but not with with uh, telling them uh, criticisms against migrations. And also there was a study from Emlet. They said there is like one percent uh, to get back from from AfD. So there is not like a big big uh, capacity. Maybe it's more for Aufstehen, but I don't know if it's met very much more. And also, like, like Christina said, um, my question is why Aufstehen didn't uh, get in, in dialogue with all the social media movements we have all, all, all over Germany. I was like, I'm since like almost two years in a part of the Linke, but I was also always in outer parliamentary, uh, out parliamentary, extra uh, parliamentary, <laughs> extra parliamentary uh, left movements, like independent movements and anti-racist movements. There are a lot of movements, and I'm also now part of the movement on Tyla or the Alliance. And I don't know why Aufstehen, if it's really a serious issue to be a social movement, why they didn't talk with all these different movements, or the, also with syndicates, before building and pronouncing a movement. I think it's not uh, really working if 80 persons uh, who are some famous names are telling, okay, we are now a social movement, and then it works. I, as long as I, uh, I'm like, since more than 20 years in, in social movements active, and I never saw that this could work, in Germany at least, and um, if, they, if the, one of the <clears throat> gains was to get also social democrats, ex-social democrats voters back, then I think like Oscar Lafontaine or Sarah Wagner is also not the really right person because they were not really uh, like bringing people together, not in social democrat party, but also not in left party. 
uh, it's more that uh, there we have a big fight because a lot of issues. So if you want to be in a lot of people, maybe you should um, like uh, select some other persons that are not so uh, mm, yeah so. Schrittig, I don't know. Um, yeah, so I, I think there are a lot of movements we can uh, support, like in Taiwa and also other movements, as I said, and I don't really understand why you don't support them, make something I saw which is not really working. So that's my question. Okay. There's someone here and there's someone at the back. We'll take a few more and then maybe the speakers can answer questions. Uh, yeah, first I, I'd like to say something about what's been said about uh, what's wrong with with left and why uh, it failed. Um, I, I don't think, uh, I, I think that uh, it's not a good choice to follow uh, right on, uh, on this field uh, because racism is not something that is uh, diffused in our uh, society because um, people don't want migrants but because media uh, for since 20 years are speaking every day, all day, only about this. And so, uh, and also uh, statistics give, say that where there are more uh, votes for right today, for example, there are less presence of migrants. So this uh, hostility is something that is built and follow on this field, it would be wrong. I think more, I am from uh, Italian movement whose name is Potere Popolo, that means power to the people and is part of Transnationalism, uh, Podemos uh, Alliance. Uh, and we think, for example, that uh, what's, what may fail is, for example, uh, the, the fact that work, workers don't trust any more trade unions, because trade, un trade unions are made uh, are a substantial bureaucracy, uh, and people that don't uh, live up this and not for uh, for this, as the comrade said, and, and for example, to reform uh, how the, the trade union works in a more uh, direct and more representative and also more conflictual way it could be had instead of taking votes from the, left, uh, the right side. Or another point could be to change our activism and be, for example, if you want to fight poor, and if you want to, not poor, we want to fight uh, the presence of people, uh, the fact that people live in the street, uh, we can actually do that. We can help them, like occupying empty spaces or giving uh, some motoristic things. It's not needed to go in the parliament for that. We can do that, like going in the street, like the Gilles Jones did. And, and something is something that is courage, like uh, why people vote right, because if uh, someone is uh, from the right and don't want migrants. Uh, right, uh, right politicians say, kick them out, kick them out. Why we don't start to say something radical like this? Example about uh, we talk a lot about Mitte uh, Weinstein and uh, gentrification of Berlin, and, but we never speak about, for example, confiscate and uh, convert volumes of concrete that are. That goes for tourism and that goes all about uh, commercial center. That maybe could go, could maybe the left side be more appreciated <coughs> between the people. And I go to the first, and so and I will go to the first question that is uh, uh, it, the racism is not the news about Austin. Uh, I would like to, to know what is the, the news because I, I only. Uh, in, the, in the program of Linke and the Austin, the only difference I found it, it was about uh, liberty of circulation. And uh, that, this is very dangerous, as uh, the comrades already spoke, already said. And so, uh, I make a confusion here. Uh, so, uh, pre I, I would like to, to talk about this, the matter of racism, because uh, the attacks, it's not just from it's not just a gossip. It's the, uh, it's the position about uh, of uh, our state is we have to defend welfare because it's under attack of uh, too many migrants. That is quite very similar to our uh, IFD. Uh, but why don't we talk about welfare? So if the problem is defending welfare, why don't we talk about it? 
because it's 20 years that it, welfare is under attack and it's becoming always more bureaucracy, always more authoritarian, always more uh, something that is kind of charity uh, to the poor, that they continue working, be, uh, staying poor. So it's kind of, it, why don't we talk about uh, redistribution of uh, richness? Because the taxes for the profits are always less, even in Germany. And, and so the workers uh, have to sustain all the welfare. So the question is, why put in the center uh, the, co the borders instead of reforming the welfare? If it's the welfare, the problem. Uh, you say because we have to follow also the contradiction of this movement. Yes, but this is a movement that comes from, from, the, from the bottom. And, and it clearly got some contradictions. If a movement that comes from the top, as of then, is as this big contradiction, imagine, like, imagine uh, try to do a creative uh, imagination uh, example. If there is a mass conflict, a mass movement like this in Germany, that is now very far away of possibilities. But if it happened, and not someone like La France Suisse that have no problems about uh, border issues, but someone with, with big, big contradiction try to manage it, it would be an help for revolution or maybe an help for the right side. There's someone at the back, someone here, and then I'll give the speakers time to respond to the first lot of questions. Ja, und mein Name ist Frank Reng, ich bin hier von der Linken aus Hippo-Köpenick. Ähm, ich habe eine Frage an Jerome und äh, eine Bemerkung. Ich weiß nicht, Jerome, verstehst du Deutsch? Okay. Alles klar. Ich, mich würde mal interessieren, das ist eine sehr beeindruckende Bewegung, die Geldwesten. Ähm, wie eigentlich die politischen Organisationen, insbesondere äh, von Menachon, wie sie darauf reagieren und wie sie intervenieren. Denn was man an der Bewegung sehen kann, ist ja, das ist ja nun offensichtlich etwas, äh, was niemand von oben initiiert hat. Es ist sozusagen die sozialen Widersprüche, die erst, äh, explodiert sind. Und dann ist die Frage, wie gehst du da eigentlich rein? Wir, wir stehen ja vor demselben Problem in Deutschland. Wir haben hier am Freitag 12.000 Leute auf der Straße gehabt in dem Berlinstreik. Wir haben einen sehr erfolgreichen Klassenkampf gehabt in den Flughäfen, wo wir, ich weiß nicht, also Lohnerhöhung, also eine Lohnangleichung gehabt haben, Ost-West endlich. Wir haben 15 bis 18 Prozent äh, zum Teil rausgeholt für einige. Die Frage ist, wie schaffen es die Linke und andere Organisationen dort rein zu intervenieren? Ich sehe im Moment, sehe ich das erstmal so nicht. Wir haben das Problem, dass wir viele Kämpfe in Deutschland haben, aber kaum eines prägen. Mit einer entscheidenden Ausnahme. Und das ist der Kampf gegen Rassismus und gegen den Nazis und die AfD im letzten Sommer. Das muss man erstmal sehen. Also jeder, der hier im Raum war und der bei Unteilbar war, war bei 242.000 durchgezählten Leuten, das war eine Erfahrung. Das letzte Mal, dass ich das so erlebt habe, war im Januar 2001 damals. Also das, das ist eine reale Massenbewegung. Und es ist einfach unglaublich, dass Sarah Wagner drei Tage vorher sagt, dann äh, wir auf den Wetter und ich hingehen. Ich habe übrigens das erste Mal Leute von Aufstehen getroffen auf der Demonstration. Die sind angekommen und haben gesagt, weil ich habe Flugpferderpartei für Aufstehen gegen Rassismus. Das ist ja die, das Bündnis äh, gegen die AfD, das Original sozusagen im Namen seit 2016. Und die gesagt haben, oh, seid ihr das auch? Ich sage, nee, nee, also mit der Wagenrecht haben wir nichts zu tun. Und sich total darüber aufgeregt haben, dass die Sarah dazu nicht aufgerufen hat. Also man hat sofort die Spaltung gesehen. Äh, ich glaube, äh, wir dürfen uns nicht in die Tasche lügen, das Gefühl, das die hier heute rübergegeben hat, dass der Kampf für eine Einheit auf der Straße wird 0,0 durch diese Bewegung aufgenommen, also ist ja gar keine Bewegung, durch das Projekt in irgendeiner Weise reflektiert. Also es ist die Frage, das, das komme ich zu meiner, zu meiner abschließenden Anmerkung, wie kommen wir denn dahin? Ich bin für Einheit im Kampf. Und es ist total auffällig, dass zwei führende Abgeordnete aus meiner Partei, also sich wirklich mit Schande bekleckert haben, als wir Aufstieg gegen Rassismus im März 2016 gegründet haben. Da haben 19.000 Leute unterschrieben. Äh, äh, der Zentralrat der Muslime, jüdische Gemeinde, äh, Zirske von Verdi, SPD der Abgeordnete, äh, Linke. 19.000 Aufstieg gegen Rassismus, gegen die AfD, dass man dagegen was tun muss. Drei Tage, zwei Tage vor der entscheidenden Pressekonferenz mit Petra Pau und anderen sind zwei von unseren Abgeordneten, machen in der jungen Welt einen frontalen Angriff gegen die Gründung dieses Bündnisses mit der Begründung, Ihr macht gemeinsam mit, mit dieser SPD geht nicht. Dieselben Leute werden jetzt im, im Wesen aufstehen, von Sarah, dabei, ein Regierungsprogramm mit zu unterstützen, wo sie genau gemeinsam mit der Sozialdemokratie machen, aber nicht im Kampf gegen die AfD, sondern in irgendeiner entfernten Perspektive mal ein Regierungsprogramm, äh, Regierung zu haben. Die SPD ist hier seit von 16 Jahren, 12 Jahre in der Regierung. Das ist nicht Corbyn, das ist, das ist die Hartz-IV-SPD. Das ist 
Wir haben Herrn Kevin Kühnert gehabt letzten Januar, der einen Aufstand in der SPD gemacht hat und volle Unterstützung zu kriegen sollte durch jeden Linken. Durch jeden Linken, 100 Prozent. Ja, aber der hat sich durchgesetzt. Es, sind die, äh, es ist diese SPD, der Gabriels, der Schröders äh, und der, wie heißt diese Frau hier noch? Ähm, Andrea so und so. Ja, also, nein, also deswegen, äh, 100 Prozent bin ich bei Steve und äh, auch bei Jerome, äh, bei Christine sowieso. Wir brauchen eine gemeinsame, wir brauchen eine gemeinsame Linke, die größer ist als die Linke. Aber wir brauchen eine Linke, die kämpft gegen die Rechten. Die kämpft, was sollen wir den Leuten in Chemnitz sagen? Wir haben in Chemnitz ausgegeben gegen Rassismus und hat die Nazis gestoppt. Da gibt es jetzt äh, diese Kohlmann-Truppe, die das alles gemacht hat, dieses Pogrom vor einem halben Jahr. Die haben ein Zentrum jetzt aufgebaut, da gibt es eine Anwohnerinitiative, da sind 110 Leute persönlich gekommen, Anwohner, die gesagt haben, äh, äh, haut ab hier, ihr scheiß Nazis. Und wir müssen diese Leute erreichen und mit, mit, einem, mit einer Bewegung, weißt du, ganz ehrlich, wenn du mal guckst, wann hat Sarah das Wort Rassismus jemals in den Mund genommen? Ich habe gesucht, ich warte darauf, die nimmt das Wort Rassismus nicht in den Mund. Man kann den Rassismus nicht bekämpfen, wenn man es nicht mal benennt. Wir müssen gemeinsam dort, wo die AfD auftaucht, gemeinsam kämpfen. Äh, egal, wo wir stehen, Mitte, äh, links von der Mitte. Äh, also Einheit in der Aktion, das zählt. Guten Abend zusammen, mein Name ist Sebastian. Ich bin weder bei der Linken noch aufstehen. Ähm, mein Eindruck ist, dass die meisten Redebeiträge sich jetzt und auch die dritte Rednerin an einen zweiten Redner, ich habe den Namen nicht mehr, ähm, an zweiten Redner arbeiten und dann aufstehen, dass Aufstehen sich zu wenig gegen Rassismus positioniert. Ähm, und ich habe den Eindruck, dass der zweite Redebeitrag im Prinzip darauf wiederum schon die Antwort gegeben hat, dass es darum einfach mal gerade nicht geht, sondern dass man jetzt an dem Punkt ist, dass man unabhängig von diesen ganzen Sachen mal zusammenfindet und ausgehend andere Leute überzeugt und damit auch mal Leute erreicht, die nicht schon die gleiche Meinung haben. Weil ich glaube, wir alle in dem Raum sind gegen Rassismus, wir sind gegen, äh, gegen Sexismus und so weiter. Und das ist völlig klar. Aber die Leute, die vielleicht nicht gerade hier drin sitzen, das sind diejenigen, die man vielleicht erreichen muss. Und das ist meine konkrete Frage an die dritte Rednerin. Wie tritt man an die Leute ran, die nicht schon im eigenen Boot sitzen, wenn man jedes Mal dann gleichzeitig immer wieder sagt, Moment, wir müssen uns erstmal klar positionieren gegen Rassismus, gegen Sexismus, gegen so. Und da sind wir wieder in diesen Grabenkämpfen die der zweite Redebeitrag vorhin schon angesprochen hat. Okay, so now we've had a few questions of all the speakers. I think most of them have been speaking, so... Maybe you could go. Do you want to say something about meetings first before we go on? Yeah, I think that this, we've got time for the second okay. round of questions, okay. but just, okay. just so, so that okay. there's not 20 questions in the speech, but that's at the end. Right. So... I'm, I'm not a professional. I'm not, I've not got very good handwriting. So I'll try to answer the questions. Um, and I think a lot of them overlap, quite a lot. Um, but if I don't, when you feel that I have an answer, so just stand up and shout at me and I'll take it like a man. Right. Um, so, to, to maybe to talk a bit more generally. I, very generally, the left has always consisted of the students, for the people who used to be students, and that's where I come from. I'm a, you know, bourgeois, educated, lefty, typical, yeah? And, and the workers. And we need to get, and if we're gonna win, we've gotta have the workers and the students, yeah? And, and it's about winning, and that all I can beg is please, always keep in mind this is about winning. And this is the thing that I'm still missing. I get a lot of criticism, Sarah Vangitesh, I'm not in the same party, sir. I'm not a fan of the SPD. I am completely aware it's the heart of the SPD. I'm trying to overthrow the current leadership in order to create the political space that the SPD can go into a coalition with the Linker. But what we need is, you know, we know what happened with Red Green. Yeah? The great hope of Red Green betrayed its hope entirely. The Greens sent troops into illegal wars using German tax money to bomb civilians in Yugoslavia, and the SPD betrayed the working class and at the same time gave massive tax cuts to the to wealthy with, with Agenda 2010, yeah? So we know red-green isn't enough. Now, I'm absolutely for bringing in the linker. You know, they don't take corporate donations. Of course, they have, from my point of view, a much clearer political course that I completely support. What the linker don't have is a perspective of power on a national level, yeah? So it's, um, I would be, I think, with the more tax demonstrationen back in the 2000s, uh, against the agenda. I think that the link, there was a lot of it, really was a social movement. At the moment, 
I may be wrong, and I'd be delighted if the linker wins a social majority and, and, and provides the next Chancellor of Germany. Go for it. I'm in. And the reason I'm in the SPD is the SPD, at least until recently, had at least the perspective of power. We're going to be the, you know, we want to provide the Chancellor. We want to run this government. Because that, you know, it's all parliamentarism, whatever, but that is a huge tool. You can change stuff there. The linker does not have this perspective. And as such, it remains a sort of a small, sort of exotic thing in the mix, which might go in as a sort of bit of spice in the coalition. But the trouble is that red, red, green is not enough, because you've got red, red, green and lobbyists. And that what we need is power from below of people. And it's not just left-wing activists. We need huge, broad social support. Now, um, going back to my mother-in-law, she used to come to me and say, I just saw that Gizzy on TV. I think he's very good. I said, oh, would you vote for the linker? Oh, no. And now she sees Wagenknecht. I just saw that Wagenknecht on TV. I think she's very good. Would you vote for the linker? No. And I, so I want to ask you, so I, I ask her, what, well, why don't you like the linker? I mean, links? Das sind alle arrogante Leute, sie sind so hochnäsig und die sind immer besser wisserisch. Should I sort of, should I, can, is it alright if I do this in church? Die sind immer besser, und die schreien, die sind immer kritisch, die sind immer gegen, sie sind niemals konstruktiv. Sorry, there's a whole lot of people out there in Germany who think you are horrible people. <laughs> and me as well, yeah, I'm a linker as well, yeah, so, yeah, we got to deal with this. We need a social majority, and that now, so, the, the trouble is, a lot of the anti-racist discourse, you know, I am absolutely, I believe in LGBT, in migrant rights, you may have noticed I'm a migrant too, yeah? This is the basis of, of, of our struggle, because we will not win if we let the working class be split. We have to all stand together. Divide and rule is, has always been the tactic of the ruling class. However, it's become something like a badge of identity. And it's become, let's say, of the student left, yeah, it's become this thing of, well, you know, of course we're never going to win. Of course, yeah, society's shit, but I'm against racism. It becomes like virtue signaling, yeah? And so I go and shout at people for being racist. Often when they didn't, what they said was often not very clever, and it's often bordering on racist. You know, there's this thing like in England, I'm not racist, but, and then they say something, you know, and it's kind of like those Christmas dinner dinners, Christmas dinner conversations with the embarrassing members of your family, yeah? Now, if you're 14, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist, and you know, Christmas does not go well, yeah? All I'm saying is, can we get beyond 14? And there, is, there, is a te there are techniques with this active counting, and the first thing is you have to learn to listen to people. And if you dig deeper, say, all right, you're worried about the refugee home that's being built here, yeah? Are you, um, what are you worried about? And people are worried about all sorts of things. They're worried about jobs and schools and housing. They're worried about security and crime. But are they actually just, they hate people who have a different skin colour? Or are these actually fundamentally economic worries, yeah? That they don't have enough security on the streets. They don't get apartments, that, that, you know, and this is the thing, because actually just, you know, a tiny hike in the birth rate, and you need, there would also be a shortage of housing. It's m not migrants' problem, yeah? And if you go to the Flüchtlingsheim and try and take all the money there, there is no money there. The money is in the tax havens. But you have to steer that conversation, and you have to let people speak. And my concern with some of the anti-racist or the sort of diversity politics, or the identity politics, is become this virtue signal. Right? When I was in the Cub Scouts, when I was a kid, you got all the badges, yeah? And it becomes, I've got a badge, yeah? And it becomes aggressive. Now, there are good reasons for that. You know, if Nazis, if people who want to inflict physical violence and intimidate migrants much down the street, we have to stop them. And I'd be very proud to be immediately there. But at the same time, we have to look at the people who the Nazis are speaking to. And if we just go, you're all Nazis as well, if we say that every AFD voter is a Nazi, we are driving them into the hands of Björn Hocker. That's, that's a problem, yeah? So, it's a practical question, and if we can leave the moralising aside, how are we going to do this? And I'm just, I just don't think the 14-year-old reaction is just very clever. Yeah, it's not going to work. I want to win. We can win. Um, so, uh, I'm all up for, I'm, you know, solidarity. And the, the trouble is, 
you know, not having been involved in the league, because I think like 80% of the criticisms are coming, are criticisms of individual things of Zara Wagenknecht. And I think within the Linke, Aufstehen is seen as a projection of Zara Wagenknecht. 80% of the people in Aufstehen who signed up are not in any political party. That's 160,000 people, yeah? That's way more than members of the Linke. They are there. You know, so I'm not going to, you know, you can criticise all you like, and there's a lot of things Alstein hasn't got together, yeah? And a party, or a trade union, it's got loads of money, it's got loads of resources, Alstein hasn't got any single sort of permanent employee. Well, sorry? Okay, sorry. Well, they're, 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 well they've, they've, got, they've got jobs, yeah, but that, I'm sorry, <laughs> well, not all unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no, but, and, and Sarah Wagner, and, you know, she's the Fraktionsvorsitzende of the Linke, and frankly, she's got stuff to do, you know, she's quite, I think it's quite a busy job, you've got to go to the Bundestag or whatever, you know, the movement is the root, so all I say is, you know what, go along to a meeting, and meet the people, you'll find there's people from much other different sectors of society who are simply not concerned with all this inner party Linke stuff, there are a few people in the Linke, and to be honest, well, yeah, but, if it, they're just sort of doing some party thing for Zara Wagner, most people just like, well, what's that about? They want to get going and do stuff. Now, could we be better organised? Could we have got more stuff, more stuff going? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm working full out on this, and I'm frankly exhausted. Right? Should we be doing more alliances with people? Yes, yes, definitely. I, mean, I was there a long time by too. It's fantastic. But it's also it was essentially top down. But it's difficult when you found a movement. And then it feels like there's thousands of people online from the linker who've got nothing better to do all day than read every single word of Zara Wagner's I'm get a hobby, mate. If you're reading every single word, so looking for the word, if you're doing word searches for racism in all of Zara Wagner's um, speeches, I'm, I haven't done that. And frankly, it's, you know, I hope you've got some sense of why I'm here. That's not why I'm doing this. You know, I've really got better things to do. I think we've all got better things to do. Yeah? So, it, it becomes this sort of inner party strife, which makes sense if you're just defensive and you don't believe you can win. We can win. But, so, but there are the objections. There's, there's, there's going to be a chance for another round of questions. Okay. What's new? What's new about the Okay. What's new? Well, the, well, it's all these people. It's all these people who are not in parties, they're pissed off, but they see parties as they are and they don't feel represented. They see structures and bureaucracies and a rather intellectual culture or a denunciatory culture when it comes to identity politics and they feel un uncomfortable. Now, at the same time, go to an Amsterdam meeting, I have never heard one word of homophobia, of racism or of anything like that, yeah? Um, there are Turkish people in Amsterdam and in Cologne, I, I don't know what's going on in Berlin, but you know, go out and check it out. All I can see, you go once, if you don't like it, you don't have to go again, it's all right. But, before it beca it's become like this sort of article of faith, that it's all sort of this sort of terrible sort of racist thing. Or it's just like, it, honestly, people are talking about Hartsfield, they're talking about Vermögensteuer, they're talking about solidarity of unten gegen oben, yeah, of below against above. They're not. It's just not talking about these things. And these are the things that people react to, and I think we can win with. Now, it's only going to be one small part of the jigsaw to create the social change we, we need, but. If you're just saying, we've got a stamp on that immediately, uh, I, I don't know if we're really going to get anywhere. Because at the moment, the German left has not been getting anywhere. Yeah? The social movement that the linkers should be, which I would, you know, it, it is also, is probably pretty strong in Berlin, which is great, but that's three million people in a country of 80. And Hamburg, yeah, okay, but the big yeah. cities. You've got that sort of large metropolitan, cosmopolitan thing, yeah? We've got the same thing in Britain with Brexit, yeah? You've got huge swathes of people who've been made unemployed by Thatcher when she shut down all the heavy industry. They want, you tell them to take back control, they want to take back control. And there's a bunch of, you know, students or whatever in big cities telling them they're all racist because they voted for Brexit. They didn't, you know, they voted for democracy, they voted to have a say in their own community. And there's different projections onto that. But, it, but if we start, by, if Labour starts by saying all those people who voted for Brexit are just racist and stupid working class people who do not deserve democracy, then Labour does not deserve to be elected in the next government. Christine, so Christine and Jerome also get the chance to say something, and then you can 
Well, it's, it's right to, to answer in English, um, but I'm, I'm looking for some words. For example, I'm looking for the word Pappkamera. Um, um, can you just say it to me? Straw person? Straw person. Straw, straw person. Because, um, yes, of course, Steve, um, no one tells um, uh, uh, or um, um, wants to shout at people um, and telling them um, that they are um, racist. Uh, so this is absolutely um, clear, of course. Um, so this is why um, I think it is so important to um, fight side by side with people, to really get involved into movements, um, and to, to be in contact. And I think this is the way how you fight racism, is being involved with people and getting organized. Um, sorry, so the left is not perfect, but we are doing it um, all over the countries, not only in the major cities, but also um, um, in the... Um, in, for example, in, 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 in Hesha, in, in Bavaria and elsewhere, and we, we try in our strategy, and I think this is so important, there are no shortcuts. So I'm, I'm a bit um, irritated. If you talk about um, the perspective of power, um, and we talk about the next general elections being in um, M21, um, do you think seriously that there's an option of power um, for a left-wing politics which rejects NATO, which says no, to foreign intervention, in which is really um, 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 uh, challenges neoliberal politics. Um, sorry, I think we seriously have to talk about um, the, the race of counter power to set pressure on any government we will have um, in the future time and, and, um, and to encourage people to, to, to fight their fights where they live, where they are, and, and to create a political force that is able um, to. Um, um, yeah, to articulate um, um, these um, demands. And um, um, so we try to fight side by side, and I think it's very encouraging to see in those fights that, that are going on. Um, so we see interesting um, developments. For example, the Ryanair strikers um, um, you, you mentioned, they were walking, they were marching on the Unteilbar demonstration with their own block. And so this is a way, um, um, a, a huge step forward because in the trade union debate, in the working class debate, we have an argument about um, um, the rise of the, um, of the right and uh, the necessity of building um, a solidarity and, um, a solidarity and anti racist answer. Um, look at what happens in, in the hospitals where the Linke has been involved by, um, um, yeah, with, with, with people. Um, um, working in hospitals, but also supporters um, to create um, um, a strong um, um, movement for more um, having more staff um, in the in the hospitals. Um, we have um, many of these mainly women um, being, being involved and, and also being um, turning to the left. We have a rise of membership of people working in hospitals because the Linke has been deeply involved into these real fights, and I think it's so important to have the uh, understanding that you can't stand beside real movements, you can't just create a campaign to get someone in power, but you really have to dig um, um, and have to build this from the, the scratch. And my argument is not putting on a badge um, against um, 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 and, and, and shouting on the, um, and, and denouncing people um, as being um, racist. Um, so what we are doing, for example, supporting the campaign Aufstehen gegen Rassismus, um, Frank mentioned, um, is to, to, um, to have trainings for people, um, and they were um, mainly uh, um, asked for in the trade unions, how do I manage to stand up to racism um, if my colleague um, gets racist? Um, I just had a meeting in, in Chemnitz um, with school students and having Nazi, um, um, yeah, Nazi um, pupils in, in their class, and they're standing up and talking about um, racism getting no support by the teachers. How do you encourage these people? I think you have to be there and you have to be politically um, um, absolutely clear. Maybe this is answering the question um, of you. <laughs> um, I think um, we have to, um, uh, we actually, this is what we are trying to do um, all the time. This is our everyday um, life um, to go out um, to talk to people, to, to get involved, to get organized, to identify which are the movements we want to bring forward. For example, if, um, in Berlin, um, of course, the, the fight um, um, against um, um, 
Deutsche Wohnen enteignen, um, um, so to expropriate, expropriate Deutsche Wohnen, um, um, is a very important movement. We have movement, um, and it's quite radical, I think, um, the slogan, <laughs> as, you, uh, as you ask for more radical, radical talk. Um, um, and it is so important to get the different initiatives that are fighting um, um, against the desperate uh, situation in housing to get, them, um, to get them together. But you have to be part and parcel of these fights and, and movements. And for example, to, to support the school students um, in, um, um, in, yeah, in, in coping um, with a really difficult situation, for example, in these um, schools and cabinets where they, um, where they um, see that the right wing is getting more and more um, space. This is, has nothing to do to shouting um, at people, but it has to do with um, connecting um, the, the fights um, for social rights um, 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 with the fight um, against, um, against racism. And this is not automatic. And I think racism is not, it's no autom there's no automatic mechanism um, uh, that brings people who are poor to racism. Um, um, so, of course, um, there's, a, there's a fertile so um, um, soil for, for, for races they can exploit if you have a um, if you have poverty and if you have the politics of neoliberalism but racism has its own logic and you can't understand the, the current situation without um, the constant um, um, trial of um, people like Sarasin, the, the CDU but also the CSU um, of um, setting the agenda against asylum seekers and against Muslims and um, so this is um, a fight that has to be connected, but um, you have to address it. And my criticism um, is that um, um, Aufstein has a um, um, hides away because there are different positions on this question. And, and um, there were many statements when, when Aufstein was, was launched. And, and so I think you have to get this sorted out because you will fail in creating a, a movement uh, for social um, um, justice if you, if, you, if you hide away as a movement as a whole, not as individual, but as a movement um, or as a campaign um, um, as, a, as a whole. Well, I think um, this, this was what I wanted to say. Um, so please. <laughs> Carol, there are Joe. some questions that you Okay, I have a lot of, of things to say, unfortunately, about everything I gave before. Uh, I'm going to start about the Linke, I think, and the Austrian. I think you'll be crow with the Linke. Uh, uh, we cannot forget uh, the fact that every society is different. It's very important. I mean, Great Britain is very liberal, France is very um, equalitarian, and Germany is authoritarian. It changed a lot in the last after the Nazis. I think it really changed. Uh, a lot of immigrants came to this country and it really changed, I think, the, the society. Uh, we cannot export movement, like you said, from a country to another one. There are no red button where you can press gilets jaunes in Germany. And uh, you need to look what happened in the world in the last century, in the left movement, to try to manage in which direction we should go. Uh, for example, if you look at the PTB in Belgium, it's this, this thing on the wall. Since many, many years, we've been on social, uh, uh, social uh, topic in the, in the propaganda. And they are, I think, now the second most popular party in Belgium. Uh, the politics system is very, very important. In UK, we are almost in B-party system, which is not the case of Germany. In the uh, US, you have bipartisan system, so it's very hard to know what we should do. Uh, I think direct democracy is very important. I think it's one of the key of the success is direct democracy for any uh, left movement. Uh, about the freedom of assimilation, uh, it is not our position in France and Vietnam. It is not our position in France and We are not for the freedom of installation. Uh, when happened of Taliban demonstration, in the week before in France, we had a kind of petition, it was a petition, about uh, the immigration. And some member of the France Assumis signed the petition. And the position of the France Assumis was actually 
we should not sign this petition because this petition is not talking about the reason of the people who are here. War, free trade agreement. And it's really important. When, we are, when we're talking about freedom of aspiration, we have to talk about this, this international organization who are organizing this mess. European Union is one of these organizations. Uh, World Trade Organization is one of these organizations. IMF is one of these organizations. We are totally making the mess out of the world. Uh, how do we get in the yellow movement? For the France Summit, well, it's not complicated. We are just here on the street <laughs> since many, many years, so it's automatic. We are here. Uh, at the beginning of the movement, there were a lot of problems because they went out um, recording the demonstration to the uh, local administration. We have them. We have the zero vest to get recorded. Uh, so yeah, we just we just here, yeah, just simple. When we have a huge movement like this, it's not so complicated to be inside. We just always on the street when we have to, to be on the street. Um, about the immigration. Uh, all the yellow bears are working about immigration. When you have over 10 million people voting for the Front National, it's very hard. And the simple solution is you don't talk about it. You just go to the next question. And the next question is much more interesting. That's why I think the Austrian Monday when she talked about that, I think it was really a huge mistake. We should not talk about that. Uh, so the other problems then after is, of course, social justice and social democracy again. Direct democracy. OK, we now have a choice of how we, how we go forward. We can either. Um, let the speakers make a couple of, of, of final statements and carry on the discussion in the, in the local bar, or we can have another round of uh, questions and contributions. What's the feeling of the of the, of the room on this? We could stay, but we could stay in forever. Okay, let 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 us have a. So we're united. Okay, then. If, we, if we're allowed to go, you, 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 you can carry, we can carry on talking to talk you in, in the bar. We have, I, I promise to make myself available for criticism. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. I have to get up at about four o'clock tomorrow morning, though, so I think the gentleman will have the answer. Let's look at this. Is this someone who's really desperate to say something? It looks like there's, a, there's two or three people who want to okay. say something. So. There's, they, they there's one. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can, can the people who are really desperate say something very, very quickly? Then we'll have some announcements, then um, a couple of summing up words from the people, and then we'll try and be the, in the bar for quarter past nine. So put your hands up again, the people really have to say something. We have one, two, three. Yeah, just really quick, uh, since you didn't very address the uh, strategies of the other immigration from the Alpstein, I would make some quick remarks. You say you're an immigrant, but you're first class immigrant, you're yeah. European. Yeah, absolutely. You have absolutely uh, social rights here, and you have absolutely political rights. You can vote, and you can accede to uh, social security. I worked, for example, three years uh, for a public institution, and I, I cannot even have access to Hatsfia. Hatsfia is really shit. A person doesn't have access to social security is like shit. And that's, in my reality, is really like nothing. There is reality for people here, like who has been living in Germany for more than 20 years, and the, uh, um, their pensions are even like not like the half of Germans. And I don't, yeah, you said, yeah, we have to go and talk with the people, but you didn't, you didn't say nothing about going to talk about with the neighbors. Yeah, yeah, and, right. I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, I know, and the point is, the only issue you mentioned was like to have solidarity with, uh, with uh, the immigrant movement. And if the strategy of Aufstein is to have only solidarity and not to fight for the social rights, for the political fight of the immigrant movement, it's like it's a completely forgotten way. I, com I completely oppose uh, what you said before, like not to talk about immigration. What the hell is that? that? That cannot be a position, a political position of a, of a, of a party or a movement. It's completely irresponsible. You have to have. Yeah, but it's yeah, 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 yeah. No, but it's, it's completely irresponsible. You have to have a position. You have to have a position that allows people living here as immigrants to have social rights and political rights. Okay. 
I said this discussion will probably continue in the bar. <laughs> These two, uh, Elif and then. Yeah. Right, the last person from the floor. Yeah, uh, I'm Peter from the left party here in Hamburg. Um, when I listened to the speeches of uh, Steve and um, Christine and some of the controversial issues, I had the idea that um, somehow your differences uh, between you reflect in a way the different political systems in Great Britain and France on one side, and Germany on the other side. So in Great Britain, the majoritarian uh, vote system, it means you have to win the majority of the, uh, the electoral districts. It means you have to reach, you have to address 50% uh, of the population or more. In Germany, you, you might uh, get 20% of the votes, and uh, as we have said, just a presentation according to the um, uh, total share of percentage, uh, still you might join a, a progressive government <laughs> but, uh, well, my, my parents live in the countryside in Mecklenburg Vorpommern in an area where there are a lot of uh, free voters. And uh, we have a lot of talks with their friends, so they, were, they work in medical professions. So I meet uh, many people uh, in the age of 75, 80, uh, former nurses, medical doctors, mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, they support most of our political views about the political left. They support our views on health insurance, welfare, non-interventionist foreign politics, and so on, and taxes. Um, most of them would not support our views on immigration. Uh, they are not, definitely not racist and not nationalist. They would rather have some pragmatic and profound argument like, OK, uh, if we have immigration, we need to control it. We, have, we need to regulate it. Many immigrants come from countries, for instance, where there are contagious diseases that we've already overcome. If they come into the country, you have to know who it is, where it comes from, he has to undergo medical treatment, maybe vaccination, medical check, and so on. So it means uh, if you, as the left, demand open borders, this is naive and uh, it's not very realistic. So now I could uh, react in different ways. I could say uh, this is almost racist, this is uh, evil. And Immigrants might bring in contagious diseases. Uh, stop thinking like that. Or, or I might react in a different way. And um, in this respect, I would like to uh, support uh, the point of view of Steve. Uh, I could uh, say, OK, we have immigration. You can't stop it. Even if you demand stop immigration now, uh, we will still have immigration the next day. Uh, so we have to handle the problem in a way. We need public, public housing sector. We need, uh, we need um, better schools, uh, we need language courses, and so on. 
Um, and of course, we need more public funding for, uh, for medical aid for influenza. Uh, we need to take the money from somewhere. And it's, uh, so we come back to our issues, to our left issues. Um, I think most crucial issue is, uh, anyways, distribution of bells. And immigration is a secondary issue. Mm -hmm. And I think we should, if somebody, if we talk to somebody who, who, whose political views are close to ours, um, accept, accept the, uh, the point of view of, uh, of, on immigration. We should tell those people, okay, we have different, different attitudes towards immigration. We can discuss this, but still we are on the same side. And too often, too often in, in, in the left party in Germany, we talk differently. We talk like, first you have to, first you have to share our view on, on immigration. Otherwise, we cannot be on the same side, and this is wrong. Okay, thanks everyone for the discussion. As said, we will carry on talking later. Before some final words from the speakers, the number of announcements first. Carol is going to say what the Labour Berlin is doing next. Okay, so uh, next physical Labour Berlin uh, meeting is on the 19th of March, and that will be in uh, the back room of Aufstürz, um, which is a bar on Oranienburger Straße. Um, and uh, every, anyone, anyone is welcome, um, so yeah, um, please come along if you want to. So I, I think it starts at 7 o'clock, um, so that's on the 19th of March. Um, then tomorrow evening, sooner than that, there's an online meeting which is on the subject of um, the left and Brexit. And there's a, uh, an MP, um, a British um, a Labour MP. MEP. MEP, sorry, sorry, MEP. Um, yeah, um, she's uh, Jude Curtin Darling, and she's she's talking, and also a couple of other people. I think Steve, you you have the names more than I, so. Did you have the names? Uh, yes, yeah, so tomorrow. Right, Anthony Barnett is uh, is uh, one of the advisory panel of TM25, and the author of a book on Brexit and Trump called The Lure of Greatness. Uh, and there's. George Hall, who is a political scientist who um, blogs for the full Brexit, so he's a clean break Brexiteer from the left as well. So you know, come and watch the gladiator fights there. Yeah. So, so if you want to, if you want to log on to that meeting, um, the Zoom number is on both Labour Germany um, on Facebook and on Berlin. Not yet, but I'll put it on. It on is. Oh, it is now, sorry, yeah. my, my comrade is telling me he's already done it, so that's fantastic. Yeah, so on Labour Berlin uh, Facebook page, so you can find the, um, the Zoom link, and so all you have to do is, um, I think, upload Zoom as a, as a program, and then log on, key in that number, and then join the meeting. So, um, yeah, and that starts at 8.30, uh, 8.30, 8.30 um, German time. Okay, thank and you. If anyone's unclear about anything I knew about, like, you can talk to Carol and Steve from the pub and they'll tell you what you need to do. From the Link Internationals, we meet on the fourth um, Monday of each month. From this year, we're starting meeting in the Rotor Laden in Friedrichshain. The next meeting, there are leaflets around. We have uh, women from Poland and from Germany talking about the women's movement in those countries coming up to the International Women's Day. Um, Take a, take a leaflet. Our next meeting in Germany, in German, is going to be a month from today, the 19th of March, in this room, where we have Claudia Haidt, Elena, uh, Elena Dagoska, and uh, Sarah Maldini talking about the militarization of the EU. Sarah was the, uh, is the Syrian refugee who was locked up in Greece for helping other refugees. So if you want to carry on this discussion, please come along. If you want to know more about it, you can leave your mail address. And because we're talking about doing things to activities which you can do, as said, the 8th of March is International Women's Day, Frauen Kampftag. There's going to be a first day public holiday for everyone, yay. And also a demonstration at Alexander, Alexanderplatz. And on the 16th of March, it's the International Day Against Racism, where there will be worldwide demonstrations. The one in uh, Berlin will be on Wittenbergplatz. I think it's at 2 p.m. There are leaflets at the back you can take. If all that's too much for you to take in, just leave your email address and we'll send you all the information later. Right, which of you wants to make the first final remarks? 
Or do you just want to go? I think traditionally Christine goes first, but I think you have to stay first, whatever you like. Okay. Well, uh, I'm just going to answer to you about the thing that don't talk about immigration. Uh, it's not a good strategy. I'm not first. Uh, I'm a member of uh, La France Insoumise, Die Linke, and Parti Gauche. Uh, so our position on immigration is clear. Now, if you go in our program. Uh, uh, now I'm going to try to explain how the work, and maybe you're going to understand how for me it's very smart. If you start to talk about immigration, most of the people are going to read the, because the legion are meeting in the roundabout, they are creating their own agora. Uh, if you start with immigration, most of the people are going to read. Or they're going to start to uh, talk about uh, oh, it's bad, oh, it's good, no, always about morality. No? Uh, if you forget about that, you're going to start about the real democracy, uh, the constitution, which is very important in France to understand that we are watching right now the end of the Fifth Republic. The Fifth Republic, the fifth republic is collapsing in the front of our eyes in, in France. Uh, then you go to the next topic, then someone is going to talk about uh, maybe the Francais, which is a topic as well in Italy with uh, Luigi Di Mario, I think. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Then people are going to understand why the people from Africa are going to France, because they don't have the power of the, to create their own currency, which is also as well the case of the country in the Ozo. We don't have the power to create our own Currency because it's in the hands of the European Bank. Then you write down your program of the Gilets Jaunes, let's get rid of the Francais FA. And then you create a reason why people are not going to come to France to get these shitty jobs, to work in a kitchen for nothing, uh, and then be treated like a piece of crap. So it's, a, it's a reason why I think immigration, we can talk, I'll talk about it, but first let's talk about the social problem and the entire social, and the entire um, economic system, and the international organization. I mean, IMF, European Bank, uh, European Union, we have democracy in, inside this institution. I mean, we have the European election in few months. 70% of the vote in the European Parliament are just for killing. There's no, no point to vote in this Parliament. So our weakness is inside our constitution and inside the law, if you start with a topic very tricky like immigration, it's bad, you need to go to the next steps. Uh, you are saying that it's very important to talk, to give, to talk about houses, social health. Yes, <laughs> you need to understand why those people from South of Moscow are coming to us. There are some reason. I mean, my friends are coming from South of Moscow. I'm not very happy in Germany. I mean, some of my friends get the, the fit in his, in, his, in his mouth a couple of years ago. I mean, when I ask them, they say, I would prefer to go back to my country, to live with my family. Well, let's create the, the, the condition for them to live in their own country, because it cannot happen here. If I'm living in a racist country, I mean, then let's talk about other, other things. Change your international institution. Let's change the free trade agreement. All of this. Because in France, it's, you have the right of the blood, and you have the right of the soil. No? Is correct in English to say that? It's, it's inside the program of the Lincoln? Because for us, it's not a question. It's, it's in our constitution since many, many years. If you're born here, you're French. But if you're born in Germany, you're German. <laughs> 
I, I think this is a question which we're not going to answer in a minute, yeah, but, but, but we can start to answer it in the, in the bar afterwards. If, <laughs> if, if Christine and Steve sub up and then we can... Yeah. <laughs> First, I wanted to start off um, with the with the Christmas um, with the Christmas dinner, um, um, yeah, because I think um, it's important, of course, um, with your family and even with your colleagues or your schoolmates. Of course, you won't discuss um, every day um, the same agenda of, of um, racism and anti-racism. But um, what my expectation is, um, as a as a left winger and the left party member is to encourage people um, not to silence um, racism um, at all. That doesn't mean that you have to, between the first, um, the first and the second course, the first course and the second course to repeat your arguments. And but of course um, you have to be, um, yeah, you have to be sure about your arguments. Germany is a country of migration, so every family anyway has a history. <coughs> Um, of migration, um, and um, I think it is um, um, we have to to stop. You, you called on um, migration as a problem. I think we have to talk about migration as a reality, and also even in most cases, um, migration is not just not, nothing in capitalism is on free will um, because people are forced to do certain things. But of course, they have the right um, to migrate, and I'm proud that Linke is a party. Um, that defends this right of freedom um, um, of movement. And I think we have to, to, to change our point of view. We have to see migrants, those who migrated to Germany 40 years ago, like the parents of Edith, but also like the Afghan and Syrian refugees that came here over the last years. We have to, to, to win them and see them as colleagues. They are our mates. We are fighting together for social and political rights. And if we don't um, change this point of view, and if we see them as something um, alien or something that doesn't belong to society or something that is a problem, then we have, I think, we have the different, we have, a, um, have the wrong um, perspective. Um, and of course, um, you won't solve the problem on the Christmas dinner table. This is why we are building movements. We are building anti-racist and anti-fascist movements because we want to change society. We don't want that a party that Tino Sarrazin is uh, holding speeches in universities. Um, we and our comrades have to uh, are going there protesting um, and show that we are not silencing racism. This doesn't convince any racism, but it encourages the anti-racist. Um, to stand up and speak up in the family, on the workplace, in the classroom. And I think this is a task um, we have um, as the left party, but many people, we are working together in the anti-racist movement and, and, um, and many also social democrats, we are having the same uh, fight and argument. And I think it's very important. The second um, movement we are building um, are the, the social um, movements and social fights. And um, of course, you have to look what is the social fight um, in your in the part where you're working at, in the city where you're living at. But um, so you mentioned different uh, things you can do. You can um, win people um, to fight for, even though those who have strange ideas about migrations and others. Of course, um, if you if you have a campaign um, in 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 Britz Süd um, um, against um, the. Um, um, against the, 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 the yeah for yeah for not um, having bad conditions of housing and for higher rents, of course you work together with people with different ideas. But I think if you um, work together in these fights, you have to um, contest racist ideas and bring people to another perspective. Um, and uh, so um, I'm what I'm and, and I want to and this is the same. Um, um, Proposal I um, um, I put forward um, to people who signed the call of Aufstehen because well, Steve didn't talk about um, uh, honest balance of Aufstehen um, from the 4th of September when the um, um, the campaign was launched and now 
about the successes of building um, um, the movements, and so I would be um, glad if you come back to it. What is your um, what is your uh, balance after after um, um, half um, half a year? Um, and I just I reflect um, that there's not so much um, um, movement outside, but I realize by um, the going down of the movement outside um, on the streets and so on. I see um, the impacts in the internal debate of um, Die Linke, and this is a debate that comes from the right and not from the left. Um, and so um, I think it is so important, so the left is not perfect. And if we have something better at a certain time, um, I'm happy with this. But I'm really happy that we have a party in the parliaments, but also in the locality, which is um, um, clear against Hartz IV and against privatization which defends the rights of asylum seekers and the rights of um, migrants, which stands against racism, which, um, which has a position um, um, on, um, on, on open borders and the freedom of movement, which is clear in the question of, um, um, uh, of uh, rejecting um, any militarization and war. Um, and this means German militarism, but also the EU militarism we are, we are facing at the moment. And I think it's, it's I think it's it's very worthy to have a left party which is then possible, uh, which is then then um, able to um, to build um, broader movements um, to actually um, challenge um, the the balance of forces in this society and to create um, yeah create create a counter power to corporate power and uh, the power uh, of the right. And so I encourage everyone. Who is um, um, who is interested um, to to um, to fight together with Die Linke and to 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 get to know Die Linke and to to join Die Linke and I'm I'm encouraging every other person here um, of the Labour Party and, and who else to to um, um, yeah let's unite uh, in fight in the different campaigns that were mentioned in fighting um, for the campaign Deutsche Wohnen and Eignen, in fighting um, racism and fashion, building um, um, the international um, day um, um, against racism and fascism, which is actually um, um, has demonstrations here in Berlin, but also in dozens of cities all over Europe. I think, um, yeah, we will continue the debate, but we should be united in the fight for social rights and, and against racism. I'll do better at answering questions, and I will be there in the bar. Um, so, dialogue with social movements. My weekend, well, I was at Fridays for Future, um, live streaming that. Then I was at the strike conference from Wars of Luxembourg uh, in Braunschweig. So, there's loads of trade unionists all talking about organising and going out there. Then there was a Bund of Western Demo in Hannover, um, which was with the motto, Wissen viele, Wissen viel, Fetisch, und wir haben die Schnauze voll. And there were lots of guys, there were home, three homeless people who spoke there. And it was open mic, not a single word of racism or anti-migrant sentiment. Anybody could walk up and speak. Um, then um, I talked with people in Paderborn, with, also with Gewerkschaft, with Aufstehen, but also with Verdi and stuff like that. Um, and I had sort of campaign meetings today talking about campaigns for so for the for the respect for people who work in the public sector. So um, yeah, I want to talk to other movements who doing all the time. I think also people were there was I think there was an Untalbar Bundestreffen or something on Sunday. Yes. Uh, and I think people from Austin were there. And that was certainly I, I was pushing very hard for that and that certainly um, so that if it, they weren't there to talk to me, um, yes. Okay? It's definitely, yeah. Um, Sorry? Anyway, yeah. before we now take the movement, I said, like before... Well, yeah, I'll be honest, like every social... And it's exactly the same with momentum. When these things are set up, it's chaos. You know, there's expectation that... There's a slightly... It's almost conspiracy theory. There's expectation that, oh, well, they've got it all sorted out. They've got it... It's bloody chaos. No one has a clue what they're doing, yeah? And people are running around just trying to get these stuff because they've all got day jobs. We don't have a start. And should it have been better? Definitely. Should the, you know, should we have done more? Definitely. Um, at the same time, there are all these people out there. All I can say is they're really into the game of this. Yeah, they like that. They want to do that because they see it's a symbol that works. Here is a person. I don't agree with Jerome 
the um, movements can't cross borders. We saw, for instance, the anti-atomic um, power movement definitely cross borders, the peace movement definitely cross borders, the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King inspired people all around the world, I'm, especially my family, um, Ireland, the civil rights in Northern Ireland, all of that came through the example of the black civil rights movement in America. So definitely people can inspire people across borders. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to give it a go. And so I feel a little bit like, you know, we've got all these people. A lot of them aren't in the left, in the Lincoln. Now, I was in the SPD with North Hawkall, and we got a lot of people leaving. Now, all I can say is that when people leave the SPD, now, either the SPD just dies, and the Lincoln grows to 40%. Now, it ain't happening. I heard that apparently Kathy Kipping says, man hat sich stabilisiert. Now, stabilisieren, stabilising yourself, when the, when the SPD is sort of crumpling into nothing, is not the greatest position to be in. You should be growing. Now, I would say join the SPD because we need to, you know, there is the potential, the SPD is not an inherently neoliberal party, because, well, if it was, then so was Labour, and so was the Democrats, and now Bernie's running, and, you know, there's everything to play for. We can flip this party around. Um, you'd be surprised if you go to the SPD that there are a lot of seriously left-wing people there. God knows how they've stood it all those years. I'm, I find it difficult, but there we are. Um, so to your point about having a position, I personally, I also have a position, I did say it briefly, on, on immigration. I think the status of illegality creates a division in the working class which is, uh, which is damaging and harmful. Yeah? So yes, absolutely, I was a first class immigrant, or I am a first class immigrant. Um, and if you start looking at really cool trade union stuff, like Susie Neumann, who, who just died, who's, who's fantastic, she organised the cleaning women in Gelsenkirchen, in the, in the Ruhr Valley, in the Ruhrpott, and you know, half of her ladies, you know, they're not ethnically German, of course, they're cleaning ladies. And those are the fights we've got to win. We, we need to have micro voices at the front, leading as well the idea that it's just somehow we'll, we'll, we'll do a bit of solidarity on the side. Not at all. The question is, however, and maybe this is a different cultural question, is within um, broad party systems, like a bi-party system like we have in America or in, in, in the UK, is we talk about a broad church. Um, or... Um, my Bevan, who founded the NHS, so the National Health Service in Britain, is one of the great socialist politicians. He says politics is the language of priorities. Yeah, because you've got to have a kind of list. For me, somehow like peace and justice, pretty good. If you have peace and justice and migration and energy policy and transport, and as soon as someone falls out, what? Then you're going to have problems because what you have in Germany is through the mosaic of political positions, you know, you have a position, say, on migration, and then you meet the doctors from mecklenburg vorpommern who agree with you about 90% of things, and there's 10% you don't agree with. If you're going to say, no, sorry, I think that's a racist position, you've got a problem. And you've got a similar problem with open borders, that um, at the moment Corbyn's Labour Party does not support open borders, I personally feel we should be fighting for freedom of movement, and the problem is not freedom of movement people, the problem is freedom of movement capital. That's what we need to be talking about. But that's another thing. But we've got to find, we've got to find um, the, where, how we how, hold this conversation. Because otherwise the danger is the Christmas dinner. I have a position which is different from yours. And we are only going to win. We, you have a social majority for peace and justice in Germany. You do not have a social majority for de -Lingo. Yeah. Now, definitely fight for your positions within an alliance. But you have to let an alliance form. Because otherwise you get the tiny little campfires and a weak, splintered left who will go on failing and failing and failing and letting neoliberalism survive for much too long. So how do you have the conversation? I think changing the conversation is a possible way forward. Not because, let's say I meet someone I did, you know, and they think that we've got, they've got, they've got a different position on immigration. Let's say I meet Bernie Sanders. He does not believe in open bar borders. Am I going to have a conversation with Bernie Sanders? You bet I am. Yeah? How, now, you can say, I think this, and I think this, but if you start, and that's the trouble with anti-racism, is it is sometimes has become shrill and intolerant. Because, and if you look at... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, but, this is really... no, but if you look at... If you, if, no, but if you... How do you... There are people who are going out there to changing people's minds, but if you start a conversation, you have to be able to listen to people. Is the moment... The, the whole right wing, it lives from this thing of... 
They don't even let me talk. They shout me down. Yeah? Now, talk. Now, I'm not saying that racism is right. I, I hope my comrades would say that I'm fundamentally opposed to it. But we've got to change people's minds. And preventing them from speaking at the moment is actually driving them to the NFT. Now, they're not right, but it, you know, it's just a fact. There is a lot of racism out there in society. Yeah? So how are we going to deal with it? And if you say, I've got my position, and as soon as you deviate from my position, I'm going to condemn you. That's a problem. So, Alstein, is it a perfect vehicle? No. As the linker is not a perfect vehicle, it is one part of a large social coalition which could force a terribly meaningful change in Germany. We need it. We need it internationally. Change is coming, but we have to provide vehicles for that change, and we have to take as many people as possible, because we're going to win when we get a social majority. Not by pandering to racism. We have to fight racism all the way, because we've got to come together to kick up and not kick down. But there are ways to change that conversation. For instance, with this thing of, do you want to kick down, or do you want to kick up? And then you can win people to your side. Yeah? So that's what I hope we can do. I'm sure you're going to tell me in the bar that I'm doing something wrong. And you know what? If you can convince me you've got a better idea and that I should leave the 160,000 people and go do something else, if you can convince me it's a better idea, I'm up for it. All I, this is, Alstein is only a means to an end, as any party is only a means to an end. It's not about the party, it's not about this name, it's not about any personal politicians or someone's careers. It's about making change happen. That is all I'm concerned with. I hope that's what the Gilets Jaunes are concerned with, uh, you know, until they start getting represented in Parliament as well. And I really hope that we can all pull together. I think that we agree on so much. We can all pull together to make shit happen, because that's our, uh, that's our objective. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Now